scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Man, are we still together? Take heed how he built it. The foundation may be correct, but the way you build it can make the building still look wrong. Are we together? Next verse. It says, for other foundation, no other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. The true, surest foundation for everything is Jesus Christ, the Word. Not just Jesus Christ, the person seated in heaven. Jesus Christ, the Word, the living Logos. It says, I commend you to the word of his grace that is able to make you wise. Then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. The next verse, please. Media. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, listen. The foundation is fixed Christ. But there are different kinds of vessels you can use to build. It says gold, silver, read on. Precious stones, uh huh, wood, hay, stubble. Let's see the effect. Next verse. Read it if you are a Christian. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire of what quality? The fire will try every man's work the fire will try every man's boast the fire will try every man's ministry the fire will try every man's business the fire will try every man's confession to see what sort it is that means regardless of the fact that we are all in christ there are people building with substances that when the fire blows upon it, the only thing that will be left is the foundation because it cannot be destroyed, but the building can crumble. Are we together? The parable of the two builders, the foundation was never destroyed, but their one building collapsed into pieces. Listen, the Bible tells us that we are like a spiritual house being built and i like what paul says that i have done my part as a wise master builder i have guided you like a builder like an architect telling you the relevant dimensions where to pay attention the part that needs more cement the part that you may just need a block are we together now the part that needs to be well supported now he says but take heed as you build everyone claims to be building something everyone claims to be saying something everyone claims to know how to make things work but let me tell you the truth the bible says time i told you time does not decide anything it only reveals by the time that fire of time passes through you find out that many people will find out after several decades that they've been building nonsense building stories building shadows but the apostle said we have not taught you cunningly devised fables you know while i sat there 
the prayer in my heart i just said lord just help your people believe you and trust what you are doing in their lives you don't have to worry about what you are becoming just pay attention on the training i sing praises to your name oh god praises to your name lift your hands and worship him oh for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name. Oh God, praises to your name. your hands, lift your voices and let's sing one more time. I sing praises to your name. For access to the wonders of the kingdom. The truth that set men free. For your name is great. I sing praises to your name. I sing praises to your name. Shela na na masina. Praises to your name. Someday, very soon, you will begin to live the rest of your life in thanksgiving as you watch with shock, as you watch how, how disastrous the life of a man can be when it is not built upon truth. Someday, very soon, you will step back and watch life like a movie and have tears from your eyes but not tears of sorrow tears of gratitude someday you will go to the place of prayer and not have a prayer point and say how can i be wicked to ask something else when you have done for me what no man can do what you are receiving is an is, is a visa for escape you are you are living you are living you may not appreciate it now you see you may not appreciate it now either because you are not seeing the results now or you have not been allowed to see the other side of disobedience but brothers and sisters i bet you in the name of the lord i want you to believe the things you are learning though we are few we're surrounded by men who have crossed before and this is the song I'll be singing forever holy is the Lord when my eyes behold your wonders holy is the Lord holy is the Lord Oh, God, you are my 
I have learned to walk in your way For step by step you lead me And I will follow you there Step by step you lead me Step by step you lead me And I will follow you Celebrate this God that I serve. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, oh God, you. I will seek you, Lord, I will seek you in the morning, and I will love to walk in your way.
tonight we are here to access the mysteries of the kingdom that will cause us to rise and to prevail Lord I pray that you will help us tonight in Jesus name hallelujah before we sit down if you are sick in your body I want you to just lay your hands there I started feeling the healing anointing right from home I just want to minister to the sick in one minute. Lay your hands there. I want to take authority over the spirit of infirmity. I stretch my hands right now, inside, outside, online. Everyone under the sound of my voice who is a victim of the spirit of infirmity. I command that devil to leave you right now. I release the healing power of Jesus Christ right now let that anointing step into your body like a drug and cause perfection right now i command every infirmity every infirmity you go now pains leave now in the name of jesus pains leave now every kind of discomfort in your body this is mount zion i command that devil to leave in the name of jesus hallelujah please lift your hands every spirit represented in this place that is not of god please pay attention i'm praying there is a reason why i'm doing this i just saw something in the spirit anyone here under the influence of any spirit other than the christ in the name that is above all names in the atmosphere of the glory right now i command those devils to go right now you have to leave the word of god is about to come out of them now in the name of jesus everyone inside outside under the influence of any other force every other agency every other spirit every other communication outside of the spirit of the christ I command that devil to go now. I dispel that spirit right now. Distractions through imaginations. Distractions through understandings that destroy the speakings of the spirit. Distractions. Physical distractions orchestrated by spirits. The spirit of slumber that causes men to sleep while the word of God comes. I cast it out of your life now in the name of Jesus Christ keep your hands lifted I release upon you the spirit of understanding in the name of Jesus as I stretch my hands like a mantle the Bible says and open he their understanding a man's understanding can be opened I open yours this night in the name of Jesus the Christ listen listen to me we'll soon sit down listen you see you don't have to be educated to understand spiritual things that would have been a big disadvantage to those who did not have the opportunity to go to school spiritual things are communicated by the spirit so whether you can speak English or not whether you are at whatever educational level, it doesn't matter. Once you are in an atmosphere where the spirit of God is permitted, the word has capacity to birth understanding. One more time, I stretch my hands to you. And I command that whatever makes the word of God barren and unfruitful. Whatever makes the word of God unfruitful, in the name of Jesus, I take it out of your life. Whatever makes you to doubt the word, whatever poisons your faith, so that as the word of God comes, you doubt every philosophical imagination, every scientific interruption to the quality and the power of the word. I command you to live your life right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and pray one minute. The spirit of understanding is upon me. Lift your voice and pray. The spirit of understanding. The ability to receive. The ability to comprehend. 
with all the saints, the length, the height, the depth, the width, the ability to comprehend, the ability to comprehend, the capacity to receive spiritual things. Are you praying? This is part of the meeting. This is a year that you must be blessed. It's your year of triumph for you to rise up like the eagle. Pray. Understanding, understanding, understanding. Your influence is all over me. I'm under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. Yeah. I'm under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. I'm under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. is upon you tonight brothers and sisters like a hand upon her young brooding upon your spirit to make a wonder out of your life please be seated if you can I want you to pay attention to a very deep mystery I want to share with you tonight. Very deep spiritual mystery. Open your eyes, open your spirit. Lord, you took my pain away and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to me. That's why I will lift up my voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're my peace. I'm prophesying someone's miracles with you. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will Yeah, yeah, yeah. that this is our month of wealth I want to share with you the mysteries that are responsible for certain strange occurrences in the lives of men and women please I want you to pay attention tonight I want to teach you the mystery of exemption write it down the mystery of exemption my spirit is overjoyed. You see, when the Holy Spirit begins to rejoice through my spirit like this, it's because prophetically he has seen that the word will be received. Hallelujah. 
you will receive something tonight i assure you psalms 50 the mystery of exemption psalms 50 verse 15 and 6 mantles have been given to the church mantles have been given to the church tonight mother kai's arising from the gates of the church for the kings to be born for the victory to be born for the mantles to return for the graces to return hey David arising here tonight Man of power arising from this place here tonight For the kings to be born, for the mantles to return For revival to return, for the power to return Hey, honey, Chant in the spirit. That's what God is doing already. There will be a mighty baptism of mantles tonight. Believe me. Tonight is, is like an initiation into a realm of reality, a realm of possibility. There is such a provision in the kingdom. There is such a provision in the kingdom that men can be exempted. There is such a possibility in the dealings of God with man. Please be seated. Psalms 50, verse 15 and 16. If it's possible for us to have amplified, that's great. Otherwise, no problem. You are immersed in a strong atmosphere of God's glory because of something you will hear. Brothers and sisters, God is not playing games with us. I want us to believe him. Everyone read as I begin my teaching tonight. Just be sensitive to what the spirit of God is doing inside and outside. Those outside, please, I want you to understand that there is no difference as far as the reach of the anointing is concerned. One, two, read. And call on me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you shall stop there 15 stop there go back please 15 so it's a two-way thing you have your own role to play your role is please keep it there honor and glorify me then he says call on me in the day of trouble and i will deliver you the shocking scripture that the lord led me to is verse 16 read if you're a christian 16 please go ahead and read Are we Bible students? If God does not open your eyes to this thing, bar, you won't see anything. Believe me, revelation is a spirit. If there is no amount of cramming scripture and Bible study that gives you the spirit of revelation, God has to open the eyes of men. But unto the wicked, the word wicked there is not sinners. The idea there is unto those who are determined not to walk with me. He said, what right have you? We're talking about right here. We're talking about a legal access. 
what right have you to recite my statutes? I shall not die. I shall not die. I, will, I won't be poor. I will be rich. He said, what right have you to recite it? Everyone is talking, just talking. I won't be sick and you are dying. I won't be poor. It's clear you are getting poor. There is a mystery. Confession is a powerful provision but under certain conditions. See, let me tell you something. Half truth can destroy you like a lie. It can do the exact same thing a lie does to you. That's why Satan is not afraid of using half truth. Because it makes no difference to him. It says, what right have you to recite my status? So everyone is confessing. Wealth and riches are in my house. Everyone is confessing. Oh, I can't get into trouble. I, I can't have accident. It's impossible. And you are watching yourself die per second per second. What right have you? What right have you? That's the point you should circle media, not do wicked. What right have you to recite my status or take my covenant or pledge on your lips? Talk is cheap, brothers and sisters. But you see, the reason why many believers mock themselves in the presence of the world is we do not understand the systems of the kingdom. Say the systems of the kingdom. So we camp around a dimension of reality and we mock ourselves. And the painful part is we are doing what is right, but the result is not there because it's not complete. God is obsessed with completion. Having the readiness to judge all disobedience if and only when your obedience is complete. What right have you to be exempted? When there is a plague that is released upon people, what right have you to be exempted? This one is not free. What right? That means there is an authorization based on certain things that are done are we together now what right have you to say a bike will not kill me what right have you to say tomorrow i will still wake up alive you know many made boastful statements like that and they are no more today many have said in the name of jesus if by the end of this year i'm not rich except god has not called me the years have passed nothing has happened exemption is a possibility that can be accessed by the saints exemption exemption the quality of being prevented from experiencing woes the quality of being prevented from experiencing the pain the tragedy of people the quality of being exempted or being taken away from defeat the quality of perpetual triumph not necessarily the quality of not being in trouble but the quality of an assured escape as guaranteed as God himself is there such a provision in the kingdom if yes what are the keys to walking in such a reality i have taught us here again and again that our lives are defined by the mysteries we have access to so two people can walk upon the earth and their experiences will be the same remember the scripture i read to you the problem is never the foundation the problem is never that you are not born again but the quality of our lives the same way you have two students in a class taught by the same teacher so the problem is not the teacher in the same institution so the problem is not the institution under the same condition the problem is not the condition but then their results will differ and sometimes sharply that's how it is in life two believers two individuals two families two personalities can be within the same environment yet their results will differ why because the bible says that you arise and shine only when your light comes 
the light is available to everyone but those who are interested in accessing it and complying with the conditions and the terms if you're with me say amen, amen. what right have you you are making a boastful statement whereas you are seeing what is happening in this nation and you dare have the gods to say it's your year of trial what right you're watching kidnapping and assassination happening you're watching you're watching people being poisoned just air killing people you can't sue the air to court you're watching demons sit on people's destinies you hear people tell you they went to bed and look at the testimony of of that dear lady went to bed and woke up with physical marks not spiritual marks physical marks on her body question what what stops you from being a victim i want to ask you a question what if as you are sitting down right now somebody is chanting your name in the shrine you can't stop them from saying it but the question i have is what right do you have to say i will not be a victim of it what rights do you have to claim that you will prosper i'm doing business it's a joke it's a big joke i have an uncle who is rich another big joke the mystery of exemption job 22 verse 19 i'm a student of the bible i love the bible I don't read the Bible to feel spiritual. I am very serious about my work with God and my study of scripture. I have found it to be the most reliable book. I've read many books in my life. It's so disappointing to know many of them are useless to my destiny. And now that I've found the one that is useful, he said, I found your word and I did eat it. Right? And it became a joy and a rejoicing to my soul. 29 not 19 job 22 29 i want to share with you a few things from the depth of my heart that can exempt men go ahead and prophesy to yourself as you read this scripture one to read when men like they are saying now across the nations of the earth when men like they are saying now across the continent of africa in nigeria even in this city when men are cast down the bible didn't say they say they are cast they are not confessed it is their reality when men are cast down something you will engage will bring you to a point where for you there will be a lifting up a difference an exemption a separation write this down please everyone it's important to come to the lord's house not just with a bible please always have a bible but always have a good material to write or whatever device you're using but make it serious when you take god seriously he will surprise you when you play games with god and make him look like one of those many things in your life then you will not get results so I'm challenging all of us online, those outside, doesn't matter. When you are coming to the house of God, go as though you are going to be mentored, taught, trained, built, equipped. Don't go as if you are going to a museum to watch, watch artifacts or watch a zoo to watch animals. No, you are going for a life-changing encounter. Are we together? so exemption write it down exemption from evil exemption from defeat is a provision in the kingdom that can be accessed exemption from all of those things i mentioned is a provision in the kingdom that can be accessed 
That means it is within the power of God to cause men to experience exemption. But like everything in the kingdom as we have been taught here everything in the kingdom including salvation the cheapest expression of God's grace and love there will always be a condition attached please train yourself into an understanding that every time you desire something in God know that there is a condition attached your condition is a demonstration fulfilling that condition is a demonstration of your trust in god and your authorization to commit him to deliver the results expected without condition there is no guarantee whether you are interested in what god is saying watch this if i drop a piece of cake on this table right and I don't give you a condition to pick it how else can I gauge and test whether you are interested I drop it here and say if anyone is interested come and pick it your coming to pick it is a demonstration to me that you are interested are we together you will find people who will not come I don't have to be angry with them they are only sending a message to me that I'm not ready to eat cake the same way other people are sending messages I don't want to prosper I don't want to rise I don't want to walk in the anointing I do not want to walk in the fullness of the reality and the possibilities contained in God obedience commits God obedience not to what you want you can't set rules and obey it you obey the conditions prescribed by God you can obey the conditions prescribed by a man and still fail you must obey the conditions prescribed by God. Hebrews chapter 1, the Bible says, God who in sundry times and in diverse manners spake to us through the prophets had in these last days spoken to us through his son. Son. God who in sundry times and diverse manners he spake to us through different people. But in these last days, among many other things, his chiefest means of communication is his son, the word, that he has appointed to be heir over all things. So it is important to trust the word of God. Don't just believe it. Trust the word of God and respect the word of God. Say amen. There are conditions that if you and I keep we will render the devil helpless and we'll find out that we can walk in the reality of triumph not as a cliche but an experience that will cause many to wonder and see the hand of God and then give him glory and I want to share with you two deep kingdom mysteries that are responsible for compelling triumph number one is what i call the mystery of putting god first matthew 6 33 the god first principle you can write it like that god dash first principle the god first principle matthew chapter 6 let's start from verse 31 if you will media 31 let's look at 31 god first principle wherefore take no thought other versions say don't worry saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or wherewithal shall we be clothed 32 for after these things these things what to eat what to wear the house you will get the car you will get listen carefully the children you will have etc your career whatever it says after these things do the heathen the gentiles seek notice the bible never said they get it he said after these things they seek it didn't say after these things they get it's a cause to seek those things because number one seeking them will never give them to you that's not how to get them 
The Gentiles are getting it wrong. They are playing by a wrong formula. They seek those things and they never get them. It looks like they get them. But then you look at what else is taken from their life and it doesn't add up to nothing. Are we together? Then it says, for your heavenly father. Your earthly father usually will forget that you need these things. So God was comforting you. There are many fathers in your life. But the surest one, the dependent, your heavenly father knows. That ye have need of all these things. 33. But seek first. Everybody say seek first. It didn't say seek together. Seek. What does it mean to seek first? If I organize a speech and price, Sam, get ready to stand up. And I say, Sam, you took first. Come out. Do you join him? He comes out alone. Topmost. Preferred. So the Bible says, among the many things, go back to your seat. Among the many things in your life, I want to marry, I want a job, I want my enemy to die, I, my, I must buy a car, this duplex is mine, I must possess it, I must receive a miracle alert. I'm not saying those things are wrong. It says among them, come, seek. Hmm. Seek. Isolate God out of the group, bring him out and pursue him. Listen carefully. I'm showing you a very deep mystery. Let me tell you what many of us are doing. We are seeking together. So we say, God, come. Child, come. Civil service, where is he? Come. We gather them like this and say, God, just hold my hand. But Jesus said, my burden is easy and my yoke. You see that? And so God says, where do I stand here? He said, just be be blessed that you are in my life. And God says, no, my jealousy cannot allow me fight with rent. Fight with whatever. You are so obsessed about getting land, you will miss a service thinking about land. You will never get it. That's the secret to high blood pressure. Are, are you listening to me now? It is the secret to all this frustration that people drive themselves and fall inside a, a gutter and not even know. There are so many things in your life. Then it says, seek first. Give us that scripture again. The kingdom. Seek first. The influence. The sovereignty. Make God first in your life. And his righteousness. The word righteousness there is not just the one imputed by faith. Understand his systems. Amplified says his way of doing things. So if you seek the kingdom alone, your obedience is still not complete. He said rather than looking for money, seek to understand principles. Seek God. When you find him and his kingdom, pay attention. While others are running trying to look for money, while others are running trying to look for breakthrough, he said, stay with God and understand his systems. What is your reward? How many of these things will come? This is Jesus talking. Please tell me how many. All. Oh, he didn't say some. Then you now use the money you have and get the rest. He said, if you seek God, isolate God and seek him. And stay with his word. Learning the systems of the kingdom. Not just religiosity. Bible study just to cram scriptures understanding the systems of the kingdom it leaves you with a guarantee one guarantee that all these things remember the these things of verse 32 what to eat will run after you what to drink will run after you the cars the houses the children instead of flying from pillar to post finding out and saying, look look i have to do something i'm tired of being buried the bible says seek the kingdom and when you begin to study the systems of the kingdom you will find a mystery that is responsible for fruitfulness it says and when you have found it it shall be a joy and a rejoicing to you do you know why many believers never rise up it's not that we don't read the bible believe me 
we don't we are not interested in understanding the systems of the kingdom there are many pastors looking for crowd looking for membership yet they will not understand the mystery of growth from the word of god they just they, they run around how are you doing it you how are you doing it like a charm like a genie no sit down there is no man who wanting to to build a tower the bible says who first sit down you know life makes it look like the moment you sit down you are being delayed you you, you get it now so people can come and meet you and say oh god till now you are not working every day you are just searching scriptures look at the foolish person who is talking to you ask him how much is his salary combined you are about to get it now the bible assures you to be added i'm not saying getting a job is wrong but you are settling down no i'm not just interested in a job i'm interested in favor why have i graduated three years and no job because of that i would not just study on a job i will study on favor i'm seeking the kingdom other people are running around and sweating watching football and you are there saying lord how how is it that men rise with favor huh ruth came with her mother mother-in-law and just went to a land with nothing and within 24 hours they left provision for her boaz say leave it as you glean some you think it's just because boaz liked her there was a mystery a woman who was even begging her mother to give birth to other children and she will wait her desire of maybe 25 30 years was answered in 24 hours and you are searching while you are searching your passion is attracting the holy spirit don't think you will just come foolishly because you no 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 the holy spirit responds to passion and hunger he will watch you reading it like a storybook first that's why you will not see revelation and you say i'll not be discouraged i have to find this what happened to abimelech that made him carry gifts and just gave abraham he wanted to carry abraham's wife an angel showed up and said if you you would you are dead he didn't say you would die you touch this woman you are dead so as a husband you are now afraid whether they'll kidnap your wife and you go back to scripture and say instead of running around policing my wife like a fool let me find out what is the mystery a kidnapper is coming and that same angel will say i've been here for a long time you touch this woman don't say is happening to others you don't know what they believed you define your reality by what you believe i keep saying it is when we will go to heaven that god will show me how many goats were slaughtered because of me how many rams were dragged to another house how many bottles only god my picture is everywhere somebody will download it and shoot that picture till he injures himself when you surround your life with mysteries you will laugh you will laugh and laugh and laugh at a foolish devil you are everything everything, everything is you everything is you you are everything everything is you one more time sing it on him satan has a system the economy of the devil is such that he's obsessed do you know if you work for satan you will still not be idle satan is the master of occupying people with things the only difference is that they are useless antichrist and they have no bearing in terms of producing results the devil will occupy you with issues that will stop you from paying attention but hear what jesus tells martha he said martha martha you are worried and obsessed about many things but one thing how many things one thing is needful to sit at the master's feet not to sit down and worry you must be listening and you must be understanding you know let me share with you a little testimony 
I hardly talk about all these kinds of things. I remember years ago when God was starting out with us. That time, Zaria was not the way it is now. That time, there were so many people pastors, reverends, apostles, prophets. I mean, everybody was called. It was, it was, Zaria was on fire. Everybody was doing something. I remember clearly there were some gentlemen who would come and meet me and say, Man of God, why are you always sitting like this? You are always writing, studying the Bible. One even offered to sponsor a, a radio program for me. He said, no, at your level, I mean, you are supposed to organize healing meetings, organize this, and, and I laughed. You know what I was doing? I was searching the mysteries of the kingdom. I didn't want to gather people and be a fool and waste their time and now be resentful at those having results. I knew it would take time. Brothers and sisters, ask those who knew me then. I spent my life studying scripture i could sit down a whole day just searching the mysteries you see this hurry hurry in life is a very bad thing god is a god of speed but he does not rush people he teaches you the precepts do you know i say it with all humility over 90 percent of those people today they are not even in ministry they were passionate about fame my god passionate about pas passionate about briefcase and suit the few times i spent with them irritated me you sat down with them in 10 minutes they were talking about their suit i couldn't afford it i could afford to study the word so i stayed on what i could afford god made it cheap enough for me to stay there there were so many people just the, all this fake and false life Oh, my shoe is this, my that, and I just ignored them with all their nonsense. And I'm glad I did. Just like some of you now, while others are running, God is saying, sit down. You are saying, God, for how long? God is saying, if you knew where I'm taking you, you will start rejoicing. Because one step in knowledge will cover up 10 years of foolishness. 10 years of wallowing in trouble. You know, this money thing, God has said it's a year of wealth. Listen carefully to me. Most people believe that God cannot bless them. They really do. That's why they don't listen to him. If you were having a job, Sam, and you were paid, let's say 100,000. How much is that in one year? Please help me. One point. Assuming nothing changes in 10 years, how, I was going to say how old is that? How, how much is that? 12 million. Because of 12 million, you rubbish your 10 years. Rubbish your 10 years. Fighting, quarreling, hating, and living foolishly. Whereas God is saying, if you will pay attention to me, I can do something to you and bring your 10 years to six months to two months to one month to one week and many of you are god don't just leave me i know what i'm doing you know for many people the apex of fulfillment is when they get a job so i mean what when you are talking like they say please get out i have a job a good job what is a good job what is your definition of a good job when you are employed my definition of a good job is a good job that I have absolute control of. If I cannot control it, it's not a good job. Because somebody's wickedness can affect me. Correct? I'm not saying get a job is bad. No, no, no. We prophesy jobs here. There are many disciplined, diligent, employed people. Don't be lazy and think I'm endorsing you. I'm about to attack you from the other side. You know me. I will have to balance it. Don't think it's not an endorsement for irresponsibility for whatever reason. But I'm, I'm showing you the vanity of trusting in things. These are the things that destroy us. To an extent that they now give somebody a job. Every, the devil does it in such a way that every day you go to church or fellowship, that's the day you will be needed most. That's a useless and nonsense job. I repeat, that is a useless and what? Nonsense job. The job that has to make you leave God to do it is a stupid job. If you are involved, leave it now. Let men insult me. No problem. Leave it. 
listen I've worked with God small he's reliable listen to what I'm telling you are we together now that's why they get angry when God blesses people because they come and say ah, ah, pastor Alpha Papa, what happened three cars two duplexes then the painful part is he didn't build any of them say no this this is i mean I'm, no i can't i don't like this kind whether you like it or not it's a mystery everybody say mystery that's why i call it a mystery a mystery of exemption that where others have to do a lot of things i've said it listen if you're a businessman here listen to me and don't think i'm daft as i speak stop wasting your time to save money to buy land in the kingdom you don't buy land through saving you provoke favor listen i know what i'm saying if well god bless you you can you can save and god will honor it i will even pray on it but you are you will be ready for frustration satan that i know will cause something you must eat out of that money no matter how disciplined you are when you are pushed to the wall you must withdraw something you don't get land you don't get properties by saving Psalm 44 verse 3. Give it to us please. Read that scripture and never forget. It's just a digression and I'll get back to our subject of discussion and we'll pray. I want us to pray tonight. Help us please. Psalm 44 verse 3. You are a Christian. Please read it with all your heart. One, two, read. Uh-huh. So how did they get the land? now teach somebody this thing and watch him insult you and say you and that your stupid man of god in koinonia you people should continue this nonsense you will beg for bread beg for bread see i'm teaching what i'm teaching some of you is very hard even you you are trying to believe it but what they have told you you are now wondering, I hope it will work. It's like leaving a rope. You are about to fall and I'm saying, leave that rope and just come. And you are saying, show me the, the quota and I'm saying, just leave it. If it be thou, bid me come. What I'm sharing, many of you, I can't, you, you see, I'm a spiritual man. I receive a spiritual feedback. I see how many of you are struggling to believe and agree with what I'm saying. It's not like you want to doubt it, but you are saying, ah! Apostle is hard though. Some are foolishly saying it's because you are a man of God. You are enjoying. Was I born a man of God? You, you join the junk that journalists carry and talk about people and say you are enjoying. People give you tithe and give you offering. No. I'm showing you how to be happy. That's how to be happy. That you can carry your wife and be happy you can see a jimmy and his wife you can see Ogasho and Shade. there are happy people you can see aaron several pastor alpha there are other angry people you see them and their wives and stress that guy is 35 but even you you would you would think that he's maybe 50. life life squeezed him disobedience added his weight on top and the devil sat on it that's his destiny don't laugh take very seriously what i'm telling you there are people you see them with their wives happy giving god glory giving god praise because they are they are they are accessing the mysteries of the kingdom they know what to do with their children they know what to do with the enemy kai may you know what to do it's a disaster to be confronted with something you do not know what to do the bible says but he himself jesus now knew what to do Look at the brother that shared the testimony. The one who trekked from um, this is a police station or somewhere. Now, you see, can you see that in spite of the trekking, he now climbed a bike and the devil wanted to kill him? It's not fear. It's a mystery. Listen, when you trust God, you commit him. Let me tell you something about believing God. Watch this. If this is the door, watch this. This is a big revelation for someone. Call this place I'm standing, 
the door to your destiny. Are we together? If you turn around following this door with total sincerity, believing that it is God that is leading you, God will remove this door and keep it here to make sure you don't miss it. Let this be a deep word of comfort to somebody. Stop being afraid. Who said he must remain there? He said, I am the door. When he moves, the door moves. So listen, listen. That's why God protected that brother and brought him to hear the word. The devil may have planned. God does not give men doors. He's the door. Once you are following him, I tell you in your sincerity, even in your error, he will still say, I am the door. Pass. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child. Hold on. When you see God doing the great things that he's doing through my life and through many great men, it's not because we got his instructions 100%. Is because our hearts are sincere. So while based on what you saw in a vision, I'm supposed to die, God shifts the door and says, pass. Let the enemies keep prophesying themselves into doom. They were right, but God was God. Did you hear what I said? They were right. Their predictions were correct. I shouldn't have made it, but God is God. Choose which part to follow, right or God. I follow him, oh. I follow him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I don't walk with God with fear. Since God revealed this to me, I, may, I live a very happy life to hell with Satan. I live a very happy life. My heart for God is the chief requirement. He will take me to the place of destiny. If this is the path God earmarked for me and I follow this path but with a heart of sincerity knowing that I seek God my sincerity puts pressure on his reputation he will change that destiny and carry it and bring it here believe me I have worked with him that's the God we serve that's the God we serve that's the God we serve that's the reason why when a man gives you prophecy it's still not the highest thing you can change it he's speaking based on what he saw but there is something between you and God that can change it have you not heard that there were people who somebody saw a doctor saw that woman had lost a child they saw this guy had lost um, whatever and the man would look and say it is true I'm seeing blood. You have lost the child. But I bring a sincerity between me and God. And after nine months, a child comes out. Where did it come out from? I am the door. Door means access. The door to everything. Don't let men fool you. And make it look like you have missed it. You have missed it. You hear people make that arrogant statement. You have missed it. Miss what? God? My God? You are joking. He will navigate that door. Hear what I'm telling you. This is why restoration is possible. He can take it and turn the direction and bring it. Listen, he is God. He does not submit to any man. You be God, you know, be man. No. You be God, you know, be man. No. Alpha and Omega, you be God. You be God, oh. you be God. Oh. Sing it one more time. you a big secret the key is not perfection the key is sincerity learn this it's not hearing God 100% that guarantees your victory is the sincerity of your heart are you hearing what I'm teaching you tonight God first you touch a man addicted to God you are in trouble I'm telling you you touch a man that has carried himself and said, God, I belong to you. 
I seek you first. When you seek other things and leave God behind, you authorize darkness to tear down your life. When you say it, people think you are stupid. They think it's just a talk for preachers. No, sir. God first. God always. And you are free. The first key to exemption, hear me, is when God occupies every space in your life. You will watch trouble come before you like this and pass you as if you are a spirit. God first. It's not about koinonia. It's not about being a civil servant or a businessman. There are many foolish career people who threw God away. They loved God while they were on campus. The moment they graduated, they became too matured for God. They threw him away and said, now we have, we have become, you know, I read, I read engineering, I read maths, I read, I read whatever it is. Lower levels of knowledge. They throw God, they throw his word, they throw everything. You never find them talking about God. They are even embarrassed. You come to their house, you mention God, you say you have come with this God, God thing. Pastor, run away from such kind of people. Koinonia, hear me. I love you too much. I'm training you to become a wonder. Run away from anybody who does not prioritize God. I don't care whether he's a politician, whether he's a businessman. If it's your husband or wife, you have a work to do. Start interceding seriously. Do you know, when people come and meet me and they say they are ready to marry, even if you hold hamper for me, it's a joke. Do you love God? Are you serious? You don't bribe me with wine and hamper. I'm not an idiot. Do you love God? Because when all else fail, that one thing will bring you back. Job lost everything. And the one thing left, the wife said, leave it all. Job said, yeah, leave God again. I lost everything. And you are now saying I should leave God. Why do you speak like one of these foolish women? And God had him. In pain, I hold on to you. Oh, I lost my job, but Lord, I hold on to you. How can I lose you? Are we together? My finances crashed, but I hold on to you. God first. The marriage didn't work out. Still God first. The miscarriage happened. God first. I thought I would not need to go for a surgery. But I went for a surgery. God first. Everybody shout God first. God first. Before that brother. God first. Before that sister. Let the brother come and meet you loving God. Don't move around and be saying I'm 30 years. Keep quiet. God first. Don't sit down moving around and say why wouldn't I get a job. Let the job come and meet you with God inseparable how can i leave him what will be my reason that he's not faithful i never see anyone like you i never see anyone like you hey, I, I never, never see, see anyone like you i never see please anyone help me praise like my god i never see anyone i never see anyone like you i never see anyone i never see anyone like you i never see anyone like you I never see anyone like you. I never see anyone. I never see anyone. Like I never see anyone like you. I never see anyone. Like you. I never see anyone. Sit down. Do you know some of you are looking at me strange? As you rise and you see many cheap victories, you will know why we praise God. We gave an instruction here. Hold on. That people should dance their way to the next level. There were too many big people, big CEOs, arrogant people who felt too big. Why, why will I make myself a small child? Please, this koinonia, you make people look stupid. The kingdom is for children. When you become too big for the kingdom, you are too big for breakthrough, too big for what? You think I like dancing? Have you ever seen me dance? Do you think I like dancing? But at his word, you become foolish enough to step into that realm. Are we together? God first. That you vow a vow tonight and say, Lord, listen, brothers and sisters. You know, every time I come here, I watch these little children and their parents. 
I see how many wrong things they do in 10 minutes. And I see how their parents go. I hear Ejimi calling his child. The wife is there. Everybody doing all they're doing. And I'm saying, that's it. That's the message. God first. They don't run to me. They run to their parents. God first. We hate God. That's why we run to him last. We claim we love him. The moment people are in trouble, you run to your strongest point of deliverance, which is your uncle. And you ran and he told you the money has not come yet. You insulted him and left angrily. You went to another auntie to an extent that you went to a stranger on the road and said, Sir, if I die now, is it fair? And God, hold on. God is watching. We pray in tongues. We roll around. Are, we, are, we, are you hearing what I'm saying? We cry. We do a lot of emotional things. But in the midst of real life situations, let me tell you, God is my witness. You are spiritual people. Listen. The, every issue of my life, my first point of reference is God. I have convinced myself that whatever God cannot do in my life cannot be done. Are we together? Yeah. The moment there is trouble, and you are calling apostle, it doesn't work. You call prayer department leaders, doesn't work. College me, doesn't work. Call pastor, have a call. They are wicked. No. God is with you in the room there. You don't believe it and you are not even interested. How many people go and sit down in the offices of men from morning till evening? They sit by 7 till 10. Then the man just comes and says, I'm tired. Can you come? Ah, yes, yes, no problem. How can I be angry? Because you think that the man can wipe your tears. And you spend 10 minutes in the presence of God. You are grumbling around and talking nonsense. Oh God, you are my. You now see why I sing that song? And I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Listen, do you know, brothers and sisters? If not for God, the troubles I would have entered, the fulfillment of the prophecies of the enemy, Koinonia would have crashed, crashed like a plane, but for God. But for God. You will keep watching this ministry rise mysteriously like an edifice. It's not because of perfection. It's because of God. When you know this, you will be outspoken about God. You think your business will rise because you have capital. And so you will keep struggling with it there. Another ignorant person who respects God will come from nowhere and rise. That's why you see, when, listen, listen carefully. When men are clapping and saying, ah, apostle did this. I thank God for it all. But me and God, we, we, we know. Take God out of my life. I'm as useless as this table you are seeing in the presence of anyone. I'm not ashamed of it. I say it everywhere. Because every time I declare him, I bring joy to his heart. And he says, son, you are sitting down on so much power, yet you are telling men it's not you. Most of you will not do it. Let me tell you, there are many of you here looking at me. If you carry one-tenth of the kind of anointing God has put in my heart, People will worship you. You will put your name on your shoe. You will be, by now they would have made rapper with my face. <laughs> by now you would have done everything, but for him, how can I dare claim that I am responsible for this result? Will I be honest? I may deceive you, and you will believe me. But I know. Listen, after great meetings like this, when I go back home, I have my small chair. I just kneel down. And sometimes you just see me hold the chair and I'm just laughing. I say, "Kai God, boy, you self. Look at how these people are clapping. Sometimes the seeds that they sow into my life, I wait till this, my boys that are working for me, when they go home, I scatter it on the ground and I keep looking at it. I say, but God, you know, this thing doesn't belong to me, Abby. It really belongs to you. Why will somebody walk and you pay someone else? And God says, it's yours. That's your price for believing me. God first who deceived you that God is only for preachers 
who deceived you that God is only for pastor's wives please hear me there are people here inside outside online you are not determined to be passionate about God they ask you you say me I, I take my things easy I don't overdo anything you better overdo when it comes to God because life will so crush you into pieces life is spiritual when I worship God I make sure Satan sees me worshiping God is a love affair and he's not invited he's absolutely not invited I sing this song not because it's a special number is a revelation to me he is my God the way hope can hold a husband and say my husband you don't claim what is not your own this water is my own right the welfare gave me if you come to touch it now I'll say you are a, you are a word what are you thief thief there is a name for that when you claim he is your God you prove it through your intimacy it's not talk what right have you to stand and say let the power of god move what right have you you know most people think it's just by talking now the power of god will move 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 you are you are a big joker not with god not with god you must have a track record not of perfection of passion believe me if you do not have passion for God forget about doing business with God in this kingdom I want to ask you a question when was the last time you took a day off to spend time with God don't tell me you love him let's examine it you see why it is better for some people to not get jobs because God is having their attention now that they are idle they can spend time but the moment they get up they are now in a hurry making money hurry making whatever and then the times that they now have to spend with god the devil now occupies them with something else don't look for what only god can give it's not missing stay with the door the one who has it and he will give you many preachers come to me and they say man of god i want grace i want to see results in my ministry and I look at them, I say, so what do you expect to happen? And they just bring out of a bag, you see like four or five different anointing oils. And I'm not against it. They bring it and say, man of God, just breathe on it. I will carry it back. And I look at the person and laugh. I almost want to tell them, get out of here. You are joking. You breathe a relationship? Is that how you grow your relationship? Time. Intimacy. Spend time with God. No spend time with men yes spend time with liars and psychophants who will clap for you now and betray you and betray you unreliable as they are they will clap for you as if they love you as soon as you turn they will stab you listen i stop trusting men's sins men are as unreliable as the devil i trust god so it doesn't matter what men what they do to me Everybody say God first. Say it God first. Bless you. Let's look at the second part very quickly. Our time is gone. The second mystery that commands exemption, aside from putting God first in everything, is the mystery of kingdom service. Write it down. The mystery of kingdom service. I'm going to be very fast. Please write it and we'll pray. kingdom service is promoting the interest and the purposes of god on earth promoting the interest and the purposes of god on earth it's an extension of your love and your passion for god kingdom service what is kingdom service serving god for a living serving god for a living Kingdom service is not just cleaning chairs. No, no, no. Serving God for a living. There are three dimensions to kingdom service. Maybe we'll just touch one. And then next week we can take the other one. I wanted us to finish because we'll start a series. Let's see how God will help us. Number one. The first proof or the first index to measure your kingdom service 
is soul winning and establishment soul winning and soul establishment daniel chapter 12 verse 3 soul winning and soul establishment brothers and sisters is a jackpot of breakthrough look at me anybody who tells you working for god does not pay is lying to you and they that be wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament and they that turn how many many to righteousness they shall be as the stars that's their reward for turning many to righteousness soul winning is not for evangelists proverbs chapter 11 verse 30 please give it to us quickly proverbs 11 verse 30 soul winning as a demonstration of your service to the kingdom it says and the fruit of the righteous is as a tree of life and he that winneth souls very clearly he that winneth souls is what wise and the bible speaking about wisdom says with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness long lasting riches not 10 years and you are down forever wisdom wisdom that when you win souls it is a service to the kingdom that compels god to bless you second corinthians chapter 5 from verse 18 to 20 very interesting scripture second corinthians chapter 5 quickly please verse 18 to 20 the bible tells us that god has given us both the ministry and the word of reconciliation two things both the ministry and all things are of god who had reconciled us to himself by jesus christ and had given us what's the first thing it's an assignment he didn't give pastors he gave all men the ministry of reconciliation next verse to wit that god was in christ reconciling the world to himself not imputing their trespasses to them and had committed unto us what the word he didn't just give you the ministry he gave you the word what to say how to get men saved not just the passion and the assignment both the ministry and the word look at me one of the biggest secrets to the growth of any flourishing ministry is soul winning not revelation i don't care how deep that ministry is a ministry that trivializes soul winning will never grow go and search your bible search modern history search today i say it without any sense of shame find out a ministry no matter how deep they are in the things of god healing deliverance prophecy revelation whatever if soul winning is not an outspoken priority you never will find god trusting them with people most people think soul winning is a basic thing in christianity it's for people who don't have anything else to offer is that true what jesus died for everybody says soul winning there are some of you who can win souls and win your way out of every trouble you watch people who have not turned to righteousness you watch people you are coming for koinonia you move around and you watch lives and destinies languishing and going to hell and it doesn't bother you because you feel apostle will come and do it your passion for souls there are people here who god has lifted in strange ways they make it as a point of contact to both win souls and draw them to the house of god where they will be saved shortly i'm going to make an altar call and almost everyone who will come out here was invited by somebody you have won a soul let me tell you every time you bring a soul to god as he's getting born again start clapping it's like taking a check to a bank while you are clapping for his eternal salvation clap for yourself too because the devil is watching
you have saved the soul and authorized yourself for exemption a woman can win her way out of barrenness that you sit down and say satan you claim you will not give me a child i need three children i will win five souls for every child and you go out and you win five and say that's my firstborn let's see the devil that will stop your womb from taking it if you don't have womb the baby will grow anywhere after all germs grow anywhere fibroid grows anywhere growth grow anywhere it doesn't matter where the baby grows the most important thing is that he comes out after nine months are we together koinonia is heavily protected among other things by the mystery of soul winning i have passion genuine passion for souls not fake that pastors just do and cry genuine passion for souls you are talking to somebody he says somebody else has talked has spoken to me say it doesn't matter it doesn't matter that somebody spoke to you does not mean you were born again i'm still talking to you koinonia hear me i challenge you begin a serious project of soul winning instead of gossiping on facebook discussing matters of people that are not your business writing things about men of god somebody i was i was i was shown somebody who tried to write a, a, some things about me thinking he knows me and i said look at you see this foolish people he would have used that time and that unit to win a soul do you know the joy in the heart of the father when one person comes to stand before jesus listen every time we pray for crowd god sees my heart it is never for a name it is never to build an empire i'm smart enough to know how to be famous i'm intelligent enough to be able to write books souls souls that when you win souls it's on your record the bible says there is joy in heaven since you got born again let me tell you it's a shame as a believer if right from the beginning of this year till now you have not contributed in anyone's coming to the kingdom it's a shame you are doing the same thing an irresponsible man does to not bring food to a house the same way we say a man is stupid for not bringing food to his house imagine a man married and comes home empty-handed and the wife is saying honey where's the food Say, food for what that's exactly what someone does if he doesn't win souls you watch people go to hell the primary assignment god has given me is not just to build and equip believers you have to save them first before they are established facebook text messages you can find a way of reaching a soul genuinely don't just say i think he's saved and talk to him and say well you see you have to be serious with god think about it then you go back smiling you didn't save him you only informed him that his life is not going well it's a different thing if he rejects but give people a chance preach to your parents preach to your loved ones you see how we celebrate so winning here many of you when people give testimonies of cars i got a car I got a plane you clap but they say someone got born again somebody just knows oh that's all right let's hear the real testimony which one is the real one the car that will perish have you not grown spiritually enough to know how the the mundanity and the vanity of the things of this life that's why we pray for souls that's why as much as possible as much as god grants us grace we keep making altar calls even if nobody comes let there be a witness in heaven are we together some of you that's what you did that god lifted you that's how this ministry started we would pray for people those times before they got admission when people came that was before they started post ume i remember as soon as people come we're like holding them and the next thing they get born again they get filled with the holy spirit and we create room for them to be established if you heal men and don't save them they are going to hell are you hearing what i'm telling you if you give if i give you money and you are not saved where are you going to don't say heaven don't let anyone lie to you you are going to heaven you are you don't have jesus in your heart 
please don't let any theologian deceive you you are going straight to hell say hell there is a real place like that people left this morning they are there right now don't let people fool you and make it look as if the moment you're a nice person you go to heaven being nice does not take people to heaven if you cannot live your lifetime you deserve to go to hell if you live your lifetime without acknowledging the one who brought you you spent 70 years of your life and paid no attention to god this night i want to challenge you your phone is full of many names that are not born again you are looking at them and you are watching them god has given you access and influence over their lives many of our loved ones are on their way to hell we know it we know they are on their way to hell our roommates are on their way to hell our work people are on their way to hell our friends your husband is on his way to hell your wife some of our stubborn children are on their way to hell you can start interceding don't say any man cannot be saved that's the talk of the devil i have seen impossible people get saved there's nobody I, I, I don't believe that can be saved. Do you pray for souls? Or do you pray for money? Some of you are surprised. We are supposed to be talking about wealth. I'm showing you a jackpot of financial prosperity. God is not a, a, a journey that you crack like a charm. Souls. For as long as there is breath in me, I will keep leading people to Jesus preacher or no preacher i will make sure they love him i will make sure they love him stop discussing other things with people and don't probe their salvation people come to you and say we want to marry you talk about every other thing there is a way you can discern oh this guy is saved but there's a way you know this brother is not saved and he's about to marry a lady he's inviting satan officially to be the lord of that home you have to save it you are not just saving a man you are saving every child that will come you know believers don't be too western to be obedient take the foolishness of the word of god and be serious on tuesday you are coming for prayer department prayer band meeting is the only department that allows other people to join them you come alone you leave and you are going and you know that somebody so he, he may not be born again dear boy can be a starting point it takes a while to save souls you may not save them overnight but start introducing them to the atmosphere of god's presence the same way some of you now introduce someone here doesn't matter what religion doesn't matter what age doesn't matter what rest what, what race I have little respect for any man of God that does not pay attention to the simplicity of soul winning. I don't care what you have. The greatest people, when all is said and done, he that winneth souls is wise. You have no authorization to prosper and to ex be exempted from the, the ills and the perils that will keep languishing men when you are not a soul winner. Are you blessed? We'll stop here. Next week, we'll take on the others. But listen to me very carefully. Tonight, one of the many prayers you'll be praying is to cry for grace to have a personal revelation of soul winning. I don't want you to just get emotional over what I'm saying. You don't have to get tracks and move around. It is your lifestyle. Huh? There are certain businesses that in Nigeria when the businesses came out people were too grateful to keep quiet they ran to people by themselves have you heard about this ah my life is changing and the person say I'm not listening you must listen I'm not going anywhere I love you too much to leave you that's the same way that's the same way you talk to somebody are we together the person is laughing and say see you and this your God thing we did it before we did this God thing before and tell him you need to go back. God is not a project that you do before and leave. Many of the people you preach to will tell you they were once saved. There was no follow-up system 
and no structure for establishment so when the cares of life came upon them in anger if god was god why did he allow my wife die if god was god why did he allow me to fail if god was god why did he allow me to do this i left god since and they say it explain the gospel to them let them know that there is a difference between an encounter with god and understanding his principles many people think the moment i come to jesus christ everything will change and be careful how you win souls the basis of winning souls is not just to prosper them it's a submission it's a covenant of surrender and submission when two people are getting married they ask them serious questions will you be there for one another whether things go well or not they answer yes to everything and they mean it don't don't lie to people of course in christ you have access to these things but train people to love god more than things and situations don't don't make people think immediately i run to god everything will change and then an attack starts on account of their decision and they no longer can stand there are many people who have been of other religions here some of them are here listening to me they have made bold decisions for jesus and some of them we have had to come in even as a ministry to shield and help them because they they have gone and some are still going through heavy pain they deserted them financially left them for whatever reason but because they were saved well they were saved to love and live for jesus i love you jesus i worship and adore you i just want to tell you that i love you more than anything before i make an altar call while everybody is seated i want you to cry pray while you are seated cry to god with every passion in you and say lord i am sorry for ignoring souls i've been trying to do ministry and i've watched people go to hell there are people who if i had spoken to them last week last month pray lord you gave me an anointing i've been joking with it just throwing people on the floor and not paying attention to their salvation you gave me a ministry i've been playing games with it watching people look warm and unserious with god brothers and sisters let's be sincere with ourselves that's not how we started that's not how we started with god we started with the simplicity of passion for souls pray talk to god they called you pastor's wife and you were ashamed and you stopped ah they insulted you and embarrassed you and you were ashamed then you stopped outside are you praying lord fresh passion to engage the mysteries that will exempt me from trouble from the grip of witchcraft from destruction That my life will cause men to love God my life will cause men to be on fire how can I be in an environment no one is changing no one is serious no one's prayer life is rising no one's word life is growing never transfer the message to anybody you've never bought a Bible for anyone never done anything to contribute to the salvation of anyone you're not acting as a genuine christian believe me brothers and sisters yet you want the anointing yet you want to be invited for crusades do you want the name or do you love god do you want the fame or do you love god do you just want the prestige and the persona or are you genuinely passionate in this place here and now 
Lord, your kingdom reign. Your kingdom reign in our lives, in our homes. Your kingdom reign. Your kingdom reign through my life. Through my life, I let your kingdom reign, your kingdom reign, through my life, through my life, tonight, I let your kingdom reign, your kingdom reign. Your kingdom reign above all, above all. Your kingdom reign, your kingdom reign above all, above all. Listen, forget about fame. And go for souls and watch the wonder God will do with your life. Forget about complaining for a husband or a wife and go for souls. Forget about the witchcraft in your family. I know you were born with witchcraft. I know there are practicing people who are manipulating your destiny. Leave them alone and go for souls. And let me see the charm that will tie you down. Souls. Don't just pay tight. Don't just sow seeds. Win souls. Win souls. Win souls. You are too big to win souls. You are too big to be exempted. You are too big to turn many to righteousness. You are too big to receive the defense of God against the vicissitudes of life. But apostle, I'm a shy person. That's why there is grace for you. But apostle, I'm not a man of God. The great commission is not for men of God, my friend. Prayer point number two. Lord, every soul appointed to be saved through my life. In the name of Jesus, I begin to seek them and pursue them. Every soul appointed. There is somebody that must escape hell because I am alive. Lord, where are they? Reveal them to me and give me the grace to haunt them. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray, Koinonia. Who have you appointed to be saved through my life? Lord, who have you appointed to be saved through Koinonia? Who have you appointed to be saved to be serious with God through our teachings Jesus said all that you have given me I have kept and none is lost except the son of perdition that scriptures may be fulfilled and none is lost and none is lost hallelujah before I make the altar call I want you to take two minutes find somebody that is serious and i want you to intercede for your family members and say i stop them from going to hell lord they can't go to hell i know as at now my father is not yet a christian but lord eternity in hell have mercy pray my brother my husband my wife pray for those who are saved too and are not serious there are people saved but not serious saved but not passionate. save them oh god we release angels 
angels of salvation draw them to meetings draw them to crusades draw them to meetings we release angels of salvation lord give them dreams may they have encounters with jesus in their sleep may they have an encounter with jesus in their offices it's time for their salvation hallelujah hallelujah we are rounding up we are going to pray for salvation through encounters that's the strange dimension the spirit of god is moving right now where men by themselves are in a room all of a sudden they are caught up an encounter that will rattle every stubbornness lift your voice and cry lord we release encounters this night dreams this night visions this night encounters in the beer parlor encounters in public places encounters in business board meetings encounters while he's preparing to go for armed robbery encounters on the road encounters with jesus Most times, the difference between carnality and spirituality is not necessarily the action, it's the revelation. The same way someone can just shout and waste his time and just a show of youthfulness, another person can shout with revelation and that alone can be tequila. The shout that will bring down Jericho. Are we together? Now, I know that we just took two or three minutes singing and dancing and jumping before the Lord. I want you to know that God is not a man. Please have this revelation. Are we together? Some of you, you will sit down now and check and find out that certain situations have gone. Some of you, in that, in that, in that rejoicing, you will be amazed to know the release of angels and the ministering spirits going to correct situations in your life you must believe this hallelujah please be seated for a minute let me just tie it up and we'll pray my spirit is fired up this praise did something to me joy joy brothers and sisters learn this be ever joyful don't jump today and dance and rejoice and five minutes later after service you are frowning and acting as though it's not god that you came to meet again make it a disposition not just an emotional thing that happened in the night the third key very quickly that provokes restoration in the life of a man is sacrifice key number three sacrifice let me tie it quickly so that we can pray sacrifice first king 17 from verse 7 or oh, really verse 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 1 to 1 to 6 first king 17 we read um, or if we do not have time 17 and it came to pass after a while he said that the brook dried up because there had not been rain read on and the word of the Lord came unto him saying arise go down to Zarephath which belonged to Zidon and dwell there behold I have commanded a widow to sustain you so he arose and went to Zarephath and when he came to the gate of the city behold the widow woman was there gathering of sticks and he called and said fetch me I pray thee a little water number one she's a widow number two trying to gather sticks obviously Elisha knew that it was a time of famine are we together now 
it will look as though Elijah just came to help himself. But a woman is about to receive breakthrough. A woman is about to receive. Only God knows what happened. A widow meant that she lost her husband. And several other things would have left her life. And then, that I may drink, verse 11. And as she was going to fetch it, he called her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but an handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. Hear what the prophet says. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said. Make that sacrifice. I know that it is not convenient for you, but I'm standing here representing God to step into your life and command restoration, breakthrough. But I'm demanding something from you. In this case, that which is valuable to you now. Make me kick first. Bring it unto me and afterwards you will make for you and your son. Listen. I wish, I wish that what I were saying would just happen without sacrifice. Restoration will cost you. You will have to provoke your faith. A seed is not just money. A seed is a sacrifice of something that costs you. It's a proof that you love God. Whenever what you have is about to finish, there is a system to refill it again. In this case, he demanded sacrifice of her. Listen, a sacrifice in the realm of the spirit automatically brings whoever is doing it into a covenant with God. Psalm 50 verse 5, it says, Gather unto me my saints, they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. This is why many believers never experience restoration. Why will you as a man of God come and meet a woman? Please brothers and sisters, I want you to reason this. You look at someone who is about to dry, nothing is happening in her life, and then you are asking her to sacrifice something. Jesus was having a crusade. He was the organizer and the conveyor of the crusade. And then he said, go and feed the people, and there was nothing. And then Andrew found a young lad. You would call it bullying. Our generation knows how to abuse words. You will even call it an abuse. Collected the boy's loaf and bread, his lunch box, and took it to Jesus. And said, This is what we've been able to find. And Jesus said, Fine. I thought Jesus had bad. So, such a harsh and wicked adult. You mean you bully this? Go and return it back. I am love. But Jesus said, That's it. Have you always wondered who had the remaining 12 baskets? The boy was willing to sacrifice a moment of satisfaction to create something. Many believers do not know how to sacrifice now to smile. This is a principle that does not just go to seeds alone. Sacrificing the convenience logs you today so that you can carry an anointing and a grace that will be able to speak tomorrow. Sacrificing today to discipline yourself and learn the principles that will make you successful. You want to experience restoration and indeed it's a principle that applies to many mysteries in the spirit. Sacrifice. A few minutes ago you were shouting and now Koinonia is quiet. Why? Because it's a reflection of your unwillingness to part with things today and gain them tomorrow. If you want to be great, listen to me. If you want to defy the limitation that comes with this system, get used to this language. Sacrifice. You will always give up something to go up. You won't hold what you have and still rise. The lighter you are, the higher you fly. Are we together? Sacrifice. Praise can be a sacrifice. Your seed can be a sacrifice. 
Your service in the house of God can be a sacrifice. Your honor to the vessels of God can be a sacrifice. You want to experience restoration. Listen, let me teach you something powerful about restoration. The blessing is not in what you have lost. The blessing is in what you have left. There's a very strange story in the Bible. I think it's in the book of Hosea or Amos. That a shepherd was trying to rescue a lamb that had been eaten by a lion. The lion so ate the lamb that there was nothing left. Only one ear and two legs. That was all that was left. Yet the shepherd still ran to still rescue the lamb. What will you do with one ear and two legs? Eating the intestines, eating all of this. But in the realm of the spirit, it is not what left you that is the issue. It is what you have left. What you have left is a sign that God is still interested in restoration. That's why everything did not go. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Most times we forget what we have left and we keep regretting. Oh God, this one left me. A relationship left you but your health is still with you. That health can be the seed that will bring back another relationship. Your job left you but your praise did not leave you. That praise can be a sacrifice that will bring another job. Are you getting the, the way this thing works? There is always something you have in your life that can bring back something you lost. There is always something you have in your life that can bring back something you lost. Listen, let me repeat myself. There is always something in your life that you have today that can bring back something you lost. You had a miscarriage and you are crying and say, Lord, this is the fourth miscarriage. You lost the baby, sad. But by the grace of God, you are still alive and you can speak. Use your health as a seed to get another child. The health that you have dedicated to praising God as a seed of sacrifice. Apostle, but I lost my father, he's gone. I lost my mother, she's gone. I lost my brother, he's gone. I understand and I sympathize with you deeply from the depth of my heart. But you are the seed that is left. Use yourself and your life to gain back what your father would have been and what your mother would have been. Everything they would have been to you. Sowing that seed of sacrifice. Someone can appear in your life and say, I may not be your biological father, but I take responsibility for your life from today. No strings attached. There is such a possibility. Are we together? Yes. They killed several children. The nation of Israel was under threat. And a woman carried her son as a seed and put him in a river and just said, Lord, just protect this guy. And God said, that son that you gave as a seed, I will use him as the deliverer to preserve them. Whenever you are afraid of losing things, you open the door for losses. That which I have feared most has come upon me. There are many of us, you are so afraid of losing things that you, you fear success when it comes because you think it will not last. Anytime good things happen, you are careful. A brother comes to propose to you and you are saying, well, I said yes, but the truth is I've not said yes first. I've had 10 people break my heart. That's what happened to the woman who met Jesus. Six husbands, five men shattered her heart. The sixth one is not even her husband and Jesus came. So she was careful. And Jesus said, me, I'm not like the rest though. And gave her an encounter. She became an evangelist instantly. Went and gathered people and said, come. What of the madman at Gadara? Do you know there was a time that man had his sense back? There was a time he was born. There was a day they dedicated him. There was a day the madness started gradually until he got to that acute state where even chains could no longer hold him. He was in a cave all by himself. 
So when they crossed over to the other side, demons came through him, but Jesus had compassion. He was seeing a man who had potentials to be an evangelist, to win 10 cities, yet he was under that situation. And Jesus said, we can do something. Now, when you read your Bible, I don't want us to turn there, but even with those demons, the Bible says the man worshiped Jesus. The remaining 1% sense that I have, the demons are making me look like I don't recognize you, but that ounce of sanity, I saw it as a seed and I worship you. And Jesus said, all right, all of you people trying to mess up this guy's life, you can go places, but let this guy be restored. The Bible says they came and they found him in his perfect mind. He went to the Decapolis, 10 cities, gathered people and brought them to Jesus. The miracle is not in what you have left. I know that whilst you're sitting right now, there is a fibroid in your stomach. But can you use your mouth as the seed to take away that fibroid? Your stomach was affected, but you still have a voice. You can sing. You still have an ear. Your ear can be the seed, the sacrifice of attentiveness to listen to the word of the Lord can restore you. No man is ever helpless if you understand the mystery of seeds and sacrifices. Every time things leave you, forget about them. Focus on what you have left. Lord, I give you all your things. I lost my job. Lost my wife. Lost my children. I'm all alone. And God says, that's all you need. You are alone with me like Jacob. Use your aloneness as a seed. Sow it and receive an encounter. An encounter that will bring them again. Job understood this. He lost everything in his life. The only thing he had was his conviction. And the wife said, lose that one too. So, why are you talking like one of these foolish women? How else will it come back? Job said, though he slay me, I have lost my health, but I have not lost my voice. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Elihu and all and Ko were talking all kinds of nonsense. Job kept listening to them. And in chapter 42, Job said, well, I may not be able to give as I used to be, but I still have my mouth. I can be an intercessor. 42 verse 10, he started interceding for his friends. And God said, this is it. He turned his life around. And God turned the captivity of Job, 42 verse 10, when he prayed for his friends. Listen, there is always something in your life that can bring back something that left you. If this is the only revelation you have tonight, you will rejoice. Go back home and stop tear all of those sheets of papers that are archives of regrets and start writing what you have left. I still have my convictions. I lost a job, but I still have my certificate. Are we together now? I lost my car, but my hands are still working well. I didn't die in the accident. And when you put all those things, you say, Lord, I laid this at the altar of sacrifice. I tell you to bring back everything and everything. Sacrifice. Number four, very quickly. The fourth key to restoration is engaging the prophetic. The fourth key to restoration engaging the prophetic specifically prophetic utterances let me show you three scriptures that will bless you tonight Isaiah 42 verse 22 please give it to us media Isaiah 42 verse 22 but this is a people robbed and spoiled all of them are snared in holes and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey and non it, for a spoil. And there is no advocate that prophesies to them, restore. For you to ever experience restoration, there must be the introduction of the prophetic into your life. The prophetic, the prophetic. Either as an operation of the word of God or as a ministry of those anointed to walk in that respect. You have to understand what I'm teaching you.
without an encounter with a prophetic grace, a prophetic office, or a, a prophetic dimension of the word of God, there is no restoration. It's impossible. Second scripture, Psalm 119 verse 49. I found this scripture while I was studying and I felt it was very powerful and um, it would be great for us to see it. Psalm 119 verse 49. It says, Remember the word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. Give us an Amplified. I want to explain to you what this scripture said. Remember fervently the word and promise to your servant in which you caused me to hope. In other words, the man of God came and told you he has a covenant with God and said God made a promise to him that when he stands and does certain things, he will hear him. And you are now saying, Lord, remember when that man of God spoke to me that something about his altar and his covenant can bring me break to I believed it. And he said, remember the word, the promise you gave your servant upon which I now hope that it will work for me. That's why sometimes you hear people say the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the God of Oyedipo. So there is, it's not some religious, you know, whatever it is. It is a system of invoking the personal covenant. God, aside from the Old and the New Testament, God has personal covenants with men till today. God can enter a covenant with a man, a family, because of something that was done and say, look, whoever does certain things connected to this, I will bless you. God had a covenant with Abraham. Listen, and anybody and anything that came out of Abraham, a sad story later happened, and then Ishmael came out. When Ishmael came out, the Bible says Hagar, Hagar and Ishmael were in the wilderness. Two of them were crying. Only the voice of Ishmael was heard in heaven. Why? The Bible says God had the voice of the young lad. A child is crying. The mother is crying. Only one voice is heard in heaven. Because God said, Abraham, you and anybody and anything that comes out of you. It's not God's concern whether it was a mistake or not. He is bound to it. It is still the reason why Ishmael today can still manifest certain dimensions of the blessing. Remember. The last scripture. Second Kings. Let's look at chapter 7. Actually, the whole is, is Elisha's encounter in Samaria, chapter 6, 7. But we're looking at chapter 7, just two scriptures. Second Kings, chapter 7, we'll read verse 1 and then we'll read verse 18. And Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. This is the prophetic now. Samaria as a nation was ravaged by so much famine that the Bible says women were eating their children. Mothers, please think for a minute. Think of roasting the leg of your child and watching it roast and yet not being afraid. I've heard of people drinking their urine because of test, but I've not heard of people eating their children. So Nigeria's recession is not as bad as it was here. The Bible says women, as compassionate as they were, were eating the same children. Eating your child is like eating yourself. The child came out of you. It's the same thing as cutting yourself and eating it. And this is what happened. And the prophet came and said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Listen. He said tomorrow. About this time. Shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel. And two measures of barley for a shekel. In the gate of Samaria. Look at me. Let me teach you something profound. The miracle. This tomorrow. Was not something God revealed to the prophet. And said that's what I want to do. The, uh, the prophet chose the date. When that land will be delivered. Listen. This is not revelation. It didn't say God revealed to me. In other words, I'm just giving you a superior information. There is a difference between revelation and creation. Revelation just gives you a prior knowledge of what is there anyway. 
creation makes it appear and manifest. Like the testimony of our dear lady who goes to her room and sees piles of money, physical cash. Now that's creation. Revelation is I can stand here and say there is a brown envelope in your room. Go and check it. I didn't put it there. I only help to guide you so you go and find it. This prophet was not creating. This prophet, I mean, he was not revealing. He was creating. He says, look, I understand that part of the privileges of prophetic ministry is to appoint to people dates. The realm of the spirit has events without dates tied to them. It takes the prophetic to appoint dates. That's why through the prophetic ministry, you can go into five years ago, pick an event that would have been your testimony that was corrupted through witchcraft and fast forward it and appoint a date in your future to make it happen. You have to believe this. Otherwise, how does God restore years? Are we together now? Time is only subject to this realm. The realm of the spirit is a compendium of happenings that are manipulated by the will of God and the intelligence of citizens on the earth who know how to make it happen. So there are events that represent the will of God. There are certain dimensions of his will that are fixed according to his predeterminate counsel. But there are others that are flexible left to the intelligence of the saints. Such as your miracle today. It's not God that decided that today will be your miracle. You would have chosen to remain at home. Jesus was passing a city called Nain. Are we Bible students? It was never his plan to raise any dead body. He was minding his business. He was not on evangelism. And he saw people crying. And then he said, what's going on here? And they said, there is a woman ravaged by witchcraft. Her husband that dead, her only son dead. And Jesus said, wait a minute, bring down that coffin. There and then, he decided the destiny of that woman. Brothers and sisters, hear me. This issue of one day, one day is faithlessness. You can insist. The Bible said today, if you hear his voice, you can choose and say, Lord, today, today, I'm tired of this hangover of nonsense around my life. Today is the day your faith can turn it around and bring you a miracle. You believe that? Say amen. Listen. You are the only one who continues to progress in time. The realm of the spirit does not progress in time. The time is bare. Are we together now? So in the realm of the spirit, you don't, there's no such thing as past and present with God. So when you say, God, remember five years ago, you said you would do something and you did not do it. God said it doesn't make any difference. It can still happen. And you say, Lord, but I'm older now. God says, and so I can readjust it to still fit the older you. Lord, you gave me a word that I will marry at 21. I'm 35. And God says, no problem, I can do it. Lord, I plan to have six children. God says, it doesn't make any difference. Six years, two, two years with twins. My word has come to pass. Lord, you said you would prosper me. But this has not happened. I would have gotten a job. How much was the salary that time? 20,000. How much would you have had now? 1.2. God says, I give you an idea. That brings you 2.4 in one month. Listen. Please, you have to believe what I'm telling you. Otherwise, we're wasting our time here. The prophetic is powerful. It can appoint dates for spiritual events and cause them to be made manifest. You've seen this happen in Koinonia. Somebody will write jam, for instance, and have 160 something. And all of a sudden, a word will come and you go and check it again and see 260 something. How do you explain that? Someone writes an exam and just remembers writing his name alone on question one. And then comes and a word comes and result comes out and is in 4.8. How oh, please, brothers and sisters, we are intelligent people, but we are also spiritual. Never allow your intelligence take away the place of the realm of the spirit in your life. The same way you are seated here and say, Apostle, can God do it? Brothers and sisters, he can. Look at my life. Look at this ministry. The word of God. Can God cure that sickness? Yes, he can. I repeat, yes, he can. Can God turn around my captivity? Some of you are not sick. But what 
what is wrong with you is better sickness than that trouble. God can still turn it around. God can turn it around. In the name of Jesus, God can turn it around. The Lord declared and said, I shall announce to us that this miracle service is dedicated towards restoration. I truly believe every word of God. And I believe that one of the things God is going to be doing tonight is to call back things. Compress time for people. Call back things. Please believe it. Believe it. Believe it. I am a testimony. I've seen God bless people overnight. Overnight. Ha! He said, rejoice not over me, my enemies. Sometimes life can whip you to a point where you look up and say, God, I have served you. I didn't kill anybody. I didn't rob anybody. Why is my life like this? Then God tells you, locate the power of prophecy. Locate the power of prophecy. Some of you didn't want to come tonight. You can come and still look and say, wow, what an interesting service. Or you can come and say, Lord, it is within your power to change this situation. Why should we pro prolong it? It's within your power. It's within your power. You've seen the testimonies. We never announce anything here that is not verified. You've seen all the great testimonies. No matter what is wrong with your life, your ministry has crashed down. You were once on fire and once anointed, and something happened. You can't tell what it is, but that grace and that unction doesn't look like it's there again. You are preaching, and even you, you know you are not blessing anybody. Again, like the hair of Samson, it can come back again. My help, my help, my help. My father has died. My mother has died. I'm an orphan. There's no one to take care of me. Listen, let me tell you the truth. There are many fathers and mothers. Prophecy just needs to bring two of you together. Tonight, if you believe what I'm teaching you, you will be amazed to see the way the Lord will turn your life around. Turn your life around. Apostle, I was pregnant. Now I'm seated here and my baby cannot even move. He's dead. Just give me a few minutes and watch a miracle that will bring tears from your eyes. I believe God. I am one man of God that believes God can turn around any situation. It will always be like The Lord will perfect that concerning me. Soon or He'll turn in my favor Turn it around me Don't cry as if jobs are finished A job is not with any government A job is in the word of God Listen to me Don't cry No Stop that tears It's a weak not When the book is open Tears will stop God didn't gather you here. Some of you traveled so far. There are some of you standing in the, in the rain, standing outside. God is too faithful to come and waste your time. In the next few minutes, I want you to believe this. Please listen, listen. Don't be part of those. Now is not the time to pinch around and hope. Will God do it? Apostle, I lost money. Apostle, I lost joy. Apostle, I lost a job. They blackmailed me. able to restore and let me tell you something God can restore fast he can restore fast 430 years in captivity one night God said that's all 
when God arises, El Gibor, the mighty man, when he shakes himself and stands up and says, I want to lift David down, let me tell you, I don't care what which way. I have seen God lift people who were not even prepared. I ju he just chose that I want to make a specimen with this person. It doesn't take time. It doesn't take time. We're about to pray. I came here with all my heart, believing that God will restore somebody. If you belong to any of these categories, except you've not lost anything, you can sit down. But if you know there is something in your life that you know must come back, I'm not saying may come back, it's not a discussion. lost my joy, can come back. I've lost my peace, can come back. I lost my husband. God can fetch him wherever he is and return him. Hallelujah. Listen, we're going to pray for a few minutes. It will be very fast. I don't plan to waste our time here. We're going to be very fast. The message is already complicated. It's not when I start ministry. As soon as we start praying, I like you. Please, if you have never believed a man of God in your life, why don't you do this? Just, just be childlike for once and say, Lord, I believe the word of your servant. I open up my heart. I want you to open your mouth and call things back into your life. Call opportunities. This atmosphere is anointed. Call.
was just walking around. Let me tell you something with prophecy. The prophetic is very powerful. You can be acting, but in the realm of the spirit, I'm not just moving here. It is within the power of God. I have done this little crazy, foolish prophetic act. It's time for those who this word, you see, this thing I've done. Hold on, please. I'm not everybody. There are a few people as I've done this now. The Lord is asking me to do it three more times. As I do this three more times, if this, God will restore people. But it's not everybody that is using this prophetic act to restore. If you belong to that category as I'm turning the third time, that anointing, that grace, when it hits you, just know that God is restoring you. Just know that God is restoring you.
the spirit. Literally, there are some of you, you are going to feel a wind blow around you. And a garment is like a change of women. And he showed me Joshua the high priest. And he was standing. And Satan wanted to rain an accusation. And he said, is this not a rod that I've taken from out of fire? In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, all those that God is changing their garment,
ones who came before. A past job, a past breakthrough, a past wife, a whatever it is, has stopped many people from moving forward. Every time you see success, it looks like the way you rejoiced yesterday before failure came. So you are even afraid of it. No. For your business, then it crashed. Now God sends a helper, He's giving you 500,000. Instead of receiving it, He's reminding you of yesterday's failure, and you are afraid. You are afraid of embracing your future because you think it will look like your past. In the name of Jesus Christ, I once again separate you from your past. asking me to pray for people who nothing is working in their lives. Listen, this is a very serious prayer. I want you to believe this. There are people here as they are standing. Believe me when I say nothing is working. There are some, some aspects are working. We are still coming there. But the Lord is asking me to address issues. Some of you as you are standing here, inside and outside, online, if you will be honest with yourself, nothing is working. From marriage to finance to job to academics to life to health, everything is down. I want to pray for you. Everyone lift your hands. The truth is, you, you won't know it's the prayer that will tell you because you may think things are working. Inside and outside, especially overflow too. The one and the other. I'm just seeing rings of fire. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this category of people that nothing is working for. Some of you represent your families. Right now, in the name of Jesus, may that fire come upon you now and bring you breakthrough. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Nothing is working. I cause it. I cause the spirit. I cause the power. I cause the influence that is making this happen. In the name of Jesus. Bring them out. It's a very serious prayer. I'm still praying. Nothing is working. It's not like you are not moving. But it works for others till it gets to your tongue. Simple things that should open up, don't open up. Right now in the name of Jesus, I direct an auction to your life and destiny. And I command you now, in the name of Jesus, by the ministry of the Spirit, be free from this evil. Be free from this evil. There is a family and the family people are here. I stretch my hands. Let the power of God locate them now. Let the power of God locate them now. Let the power of God locate them now. You see, brothers and sisters, these are the things that stop you from experiencing results. My brother, come. Your salvation has come. Come and stand here. I'm going to pray for you. Look at me. Hold on. This is your first time coming here. I'm looking at you and in the realm of the spirit. You belong to this category I'm talking about. Nothing is working. Huh? Even finances is the grace of God. Where are you coming from? Um, hold on. Please help that the ushers to help them. Are you Yoruba? You are Yoruba? Yes, sir. From Akure State? Yes, Where are you from? Ondo, Ondo State. Ondo is what? This is what I'm saying. Akure or Ondo. That's what. You are coming from Akure. Yes, sir. I'm 
because I'm seeing a car and that's where you're coming from. Where are you coming from now? That's what I'm saying. The Lord is going to change your life totally right now. Who is Lake Up? Stand here. Your life is about to change. Look at him, sir. The Lord will do you a miracle. This lady wearing this, this lime thing, God is not done with you. I've seen an angel pouring oil on her. This one's standing. Huh? Help her. God is not done. I'll come to you shortly. We're going to do this very fast. Hopefully before, by the grace of God, between now and the end of the day, we'll convert one of the miracle service to a vigil. It's not just prayer. By God's grace, I will trust God for grace to prophesy upon our lives. I will go section by section, inside and outside. Prophecy is powerful when it's done with understanding. It can wipe your tears in one minute. Lift your hands. You are laid up. Is it Augustus? Yes, Augustus or Augustus. Something that has been Augustus. Augustus or something. Augustus. I'm hearing like Augustus. Please, we have to finish fast because we have to pray for the city. Augustus. Change the story. Jesus. Something just left you. You are sick. That sickness has gone now. In the name of Jesus. Brother, you don't make it in life by hustling. You make it in life by divine direction. This is what God is saying. What's your name? Just bring them, but the name I hear is Augustus, but I will pray for you something, Augustus. My brother, hold my hands. This is not about hustling. Huh? It's not moving around. It's walking circumspectly by the Spirit and in grant you grace. Hold my hands. The Lord will wipe your tears in the name of Jesus. I bring this oppression to an end. That man holding pictures, run, come. Your breakthrough has come. Run, run, come. Stand here. Where are you coming from? I'm looking at you. You are not in Zaria. From Kano State. You are from Kano State. Who is this? No, no, I'm not. I'm looking at your picture. My mom. What's wrong with her? Nothing is wrong with her. She gave me something for you. Your mom is sick. You don't know something is wrong with her. Hold on, please. If they are manifesting, just leave them. Please, let's be fast. I want to pray for you. This one. She's my sister too. This is your sister. Yes. If I don't pray, I'm seeing this girl inside the coffin. Where is she? She's in Kano. Is she well? Yes. She's well. Yes. We have to pray for her. One of your sisters is sick. Yes. Sir. Is that true? Yes, Where sir. is she? She's in Kano. She's in Kano. The same thing happening to that one is about to happen to this one. Do I know you? That's what I'm telling you. God wants to change this thing now. You are a sincere person. Now what do you do? I'm a banker. Sir. You are a banker. I will pray for you. So that they will not cause trouble and steal money and you in your group. There's already trouble. Yes, Is yes, that sir. true? Yes, sir. In your office. Yes, sir. And if I don't pray for you, they are going to sack you by August. I want to pray for You're you. Correct, sir. You're August. Correct, sir. That's You're what correct, stand up. That's You're what correct, they told sir. you. Hold it. If I don't pray for you by August, you are leaving at once. But there is a God. There is a God in heaven. There is a God in heaven. Come, sir. I don't know you, and I don't know how your mother got to know me, but your mother loves me with all her heart. Is that true? Yes, sir. I want you to tell your mother that her son is blessing her from his heart. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. I'll 
pray for you, sir. Huh? Because people have to be careful. There is a group, this bank group. All of you have problems. They are going to make you to pay some amount of money that is missing. And they are going to drive all of you. They need the mercy of God. Huh? Yes, and for your sister, this is witchcraft. God is coming in to step in. You are a very nice person to come in. In the name of Jesus. The same thing God is delivering you from is what is delivering the person shouting there. Let it turn now. I lay my hands upon you. Ugechuku. Is it Ugechuku or Ugechuku or something? In the name of Jesus, I speak favor. Sir, look at me. As I laid my hands on you, I saw you climbing a ladder. Watch this. This is how you will stand here in Koinonia to testify. I want everybody to look at this brother very well, know his face, because he's going to come and stand here and testify of a dramatic breakthrough that God is bringing to his life. Is it Obochuku or Obochuku? Which of you came from Southern Canada? You come and stand, your miracle has come. Jesus. Stand up, sir. What do you do? Watch with the MC, Kathy. Federal Medical Center. Yes, careful. I want to pray for you. If God were to do one thing for you, what will it be? You're a wise man. I want to pray for you. God is going to lift you. Do you know that the hand of God is upon your life? Not just for like hand of God, even to tell people about Jesus Christ. There is an evangelistic grace on yes. your life. Yes. God has revealed it to you. Yes. You know it. I've been doing that. I was together in your program. In soup, two days program, you came at Kev. Oh, was you were there at the, at yes, the meeting. For you were part of the committee people yeah, there. Yeah. Because I see a man that God will use greatly in outreaches. I'm seeing signs and wonders. God will use you greatly. So I want to pray for you. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let an anointing, something will come upon you now. I tell you, you will rise up from this night and begin to walk miracles like you held the champ. Receive that grace right now. In the name of Jesus, the same thing is happening to that person. I release that grace. I activate your spirit, man, by the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come. There is a spirit troubling this brother. Stand up. Come. Lift your hands. Let him go now. Out. In the name of Jesus Christ. He came to receive impartation. What you need is deliverance first. There is a, a spirit that is oppressing you. Mama, can I talk to you, ma? Please. Where are you coming from, madam? Abuja. You believe that God is going to change your story. In the name of Jesus, you will. I want to pray for you. Please hold my hand because the Lord said I should bless you. The Lord said I should bless you. There is, I'm seeing, I'm seeing one. Hi. The Lord is showing me the vision of a lady. I'm looking at this table and I'm seeing, I'm not seeing a table. I'm seeing a lady. You are wearing like blue, a blue cloth with her tie. You are crying now, cleaning your tears. And you are asking the Lord that I will locate you. You are inside here. No, you are wearing blue. is coming. You wore something. Who is that? You tied your head with. Madam, run and come. You are the one I'm talking about. I will pray for you. Look at me. Where were you sitting? Where, was she inside here? Yes, sir. Where, is, where are you coming from? I'm coming from Kemi State. Kemi State. I'm going to pray for you. He said, I should tell you that he's bringing captivity to an end in your life this night. Captivity to an end. You believe it? Let it be yours now. The power of the Holy Spirit. My sister, look at me. Shame and reproach. I'm looking at you, but I'm seeing the face of an old woman. Hold my hands. Let shame and reproach leave you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Set you free by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
mama in the name of Jesus Christ may the God that I serve lift you may the God that I serve honor you your help is in Abuja Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit. There is someone you are from Zuru. Zuru is in Kebi. Zuru Shabala Katabalata. Come and receive your miracle, my dear. Come. Come on, carelessly. You are from where? Why are you here? sound of a child and the Lord is saying a child should come now two years two years two years where is the person come call the person's name now no children two years no children we are going to pray she's not here this is your son is the one here in the okay you standing for them mama why should you give birth to children and not see your grandchildren Somebody shout, no way. Shout it again, no way. The Bible says you will see your children's children. That's scriptures. It didn't say you will see them on your deathbed. You will see them and dance and rejoice with them. Mama, do you believe if I pray for this lady now, she will come back and testify here with a child? I believe in Jesus' name. It will happen. You believe. What's her name? Her name is Adama Issa. Adama. Adama, in the name of Jesus, become pregnant. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This one. Yeah, the medium. This is the one. No, no, I'll pray for him. This one is again. Peter. Peter. In the name of Jesus, I declare you are blessed. Mama, the pain you feel in your back sometimes. Diabetes. Hold on. Ulcer. I will pray for you. You have fibroid. Yes. You have diabetes. Yes. You have ulcer. Yes, sir. What does this look like? You see how the devil is? Fibroid, diabetes, ulcer. A woman like this. Then her own children. Barrenness. Then this one. There's no speed in your life. Come and stand here. You, are, you that you are the gentleman, there's serious retrogression. I have to pray for you. Huh? You love God, but you are not moving forward at all. I have to pray for you. Huh? Is that true, Mama? Okay. Repeating, repeating, repeating. 
That's what I'm saying. It's not moving forward. Yes, sir. You believe in the message I just preached that God is a restorer. I believe. My Jesus. brother, it's not that you are lazy. There is a spirit that manipulates your results. You are being repeating forever. I have to pray for you. Lift your hands. You are the one I will start with first. Father, let me end now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands on your mind and I command by the power of the Holy Spirit to have the mind of Christ. Right now, over. It is over in the name of Jesus. I pray for this, your children. Pray for this. Where is he? Husband. Yes. We were from Plato State, but we live in Kano. Mumta and Bokos. Okay. In Aike, she made it. Yeah, no, Kano. We have to pray for him because I'm seeing a serious spirit of delay in his life. We have to pray for him. And I'm seeing he's having problem already with his wife. He may not tell me. This is something we need to pray for. Um, I hope you are not embarrassed. No, no, sir. In the name of Jesus, we pray for you. Mama, let me pray for you. All sad that diabetes, fibroid, and um, and and ulcer. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command every single one of them, help her, let it go now. The same way it came, let it go. Every house has an entry and exit. Let this be the exit of this now. In the name of Jesus Christ. A lady is going to shout now under the anointing. God is removing fiber from someone's stomach. Now, this is what I'm seeing in the spirit. We are going to pray for the sick now very quickly. In the name of Jesus Christ. Someone, I'm seeing this guy. I command it now. I command it now to happen. Those malignant groups, I command it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. By the power Spirit, a loud shout is going to be someone with that loud shout. That's the end of it. It goes now. Never to be told. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands. Before we pray for the sick, I want to challenge every strange spirit that is responsible for sabotaging the purposes of God in your life. Lift your hands. As I minister deliverance to you, it doesn't mean you are possessed. No, no. The operations of demons is such that they can take advantage of mechanisms, provisions in the realm of the spirit to manipulate people. I want to pray for you. I have to do this before we start praying for the sick. Inside, outside, I want you to be ready. Lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Father, anyone under the influence of any spirit, please get ready and pray. I see mighty deliverances happening. Any strange spirit in this place that is tying down the destiny of anyone. At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. One, two, three. I command you to leave now. Go now. Go now. I command in the name of Jesus. By the power that is in the blood of Jesus. and pray. For time's sake, you may not need to bring them out. Just, just leave them there, inside and outside so that we can call those who are sick and pray for them quickly. In the name of Jesus, I declare every influence that is attached to your family, the family that is trying to rob you right now in Jesus' name, I declare and declare fire is coming on you now. Fire is coming on you now. Fire is coming on you now. So please, come on, Shalabaya. Legate, legate, legate. I cause it to its foundation. I cause it by the blood of the eternal covenant. I come tonight with the rod of the higher priesthood. And I cause it every activity of diabolism. In the name of Jesus Christ. against your life in the day and in the night. 
tonight is speaking against you. I stand here tonight in the name of Jesus and I stretch my hands towards you. If there is anyone inside, outside, under the sound of my voice, who is a victim of the speakings of altars, I command them to die now in the name of Jesus. I cause those altars, they cease from functioning. I cause those altars. physical rings on your hand physical rings then it will disappear who is that there's someone here like that please quickly let me pray for you don't be embarrassed i want to pray for you the lord just gave me a revelation sometimes you look at your hand and you will see you think it's a vision rings like ring on your hand you started seeing it in your dreams but now physically sometimes you see it whether the person is inside or outside, except if they are under the anointing. But please, I would like to pray for that person as we pray for the sick. Don't be ashamed, don't be afraid. It's a very serious thing I need to pray for you. This, this madam, come. This lady, the lady wearing lime, come. I want to pray for you. Witchcraft comes to an end now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a small child within the ages of maybe 1 to 11. Now as I'm praying, the power of God is going to come upon that child and the child will start manifesting. I'm seeing this is, this is some demonic, diabolic thing. I'm not saying the child is bad. I'm just showing you what the Lord is showing me. Father, wherever this child is, I pray for our children now. Whether it is an initiation, whether it is anything occultic, I'm, I decree and declare right now, by the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ, wherever that little child is, I command those devils to live now. I command those devils to live now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command those devils to live now. Very quickly, we are going to pray for the sick. There are so many things God is doing in the realm of the spirit. There are so many things God is doing. There is a brother the power of God is going to come on him now, overflow to the one at the road. Please, I want you to bring him now. I want to talk to him. Overflow to. I see an angel of the Lord moving across overflow to. And the fire of God is falling on a brother. Please, I want that brother to come. The fire of God will suddenly fall upon that person. Please let him come. Carry him and, and bring him. I want to prophesy to him. I'm going to give us a prayer point now. While we are praying, we are going to ask people to come so that we'll pray for the sick very, very quickly because I want to be able to have time to prophesy. Remember, I spoke about restoration. I want to use time to prophesy. Now, watch this, please. Overflow one, all the overflows, those who are sick in body, I want you to, when, when we finish praying, make your way to your various overflows and wait there. There will be people who will come to minister healing to you. We believe in the ministry of miracles. God has anointed us for this purpose. And by God's grace, we are not too many that we cannot lay hands on people one by one. And that's why we do that. So that everybody will have that sense of, I may not be able to lay hands on people outside, but there are men and, and women of God anointed and they will be able to also minister to you. Praise the Lord. Please make sure you are sensitive outside. I want to pray for that gentleman. That's him. Ah. Let it end now. I stretch my hands towards you. I bring it to an end. There is sorrow upon sorrow on this gentleman's life. The Lord is asking me to wave my hands. It comes to an end now. This guy is not the person. No. Just, just leave him there. At least he has received his own. Who is this one? From outside, overflow two. The person is supposed to be shouting. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let this end. I'm stretching my hands. In the name of 
Jesus, I command the power of darkness over your life and over your family to be broken right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I breathe the life of God into you and I decree and declare that it comes to an end now. Um, I know there are many people here. There is a gentleman. Please, I don't do these things to disgrace me. But there is a gentleman here. Um, you are thoroughly addicted to taking. You know, you always hear me say that thing. What's the name of that thing? That codeine. But your own is not just codeine alone. It's plus. Whether smoke, um, some of these funny things. You are here and you are tired of it, but you cannot stop. Please, where are you? Please don't waste our time. There's a gentleman that I need to pray for. Seems to me like that person is outside, inside. Please, if you are here, don't be embarrassed. I want to help you end this. I know there are many people, but there is a specific person God is talking to me about. Let's just flow as a Holy Spirit to smoke him, please. That gentleman, I want you to come out here and I want to lay my hands and end it. You are tired of it, but you can't stop. No matter what you do, that's what you spend your little money on. And this thing is crushing your life and destroying your destiny. Where are you? Let's appreciate him. Hallelujah. Listen, look at me. Jesus said, he who does not have sin should cast the first stone. When we call people like this, we don't condemn people. I love you with all my heart. The meaning of my name is the way to love. I love people. You look at these gentlemen, you can see the way their lives are. You see how disorganized they are. This is the devil. If we don't pray for these people, this gentleman one day will become a father. It doesn't matter. I prophecy for one is for all. Come and join them. I want to pray for you now. Please, one minute. If you are if you are still thinking about it, just remain there. But you are saying, man of God, I'm tired of this thing. You have to help me. Quickly join them. God gave a word for one, but I'm praying because we have to pray for the sick quickly. Some of you, nobody led you into it. It's a spirit that just pushed you into this thing. You love God, but this thing is killing you. I salute your courage. I don't know if I would have had the courage to come out. I salute your courage. Come. Let, I think we should honor them. Come on, Koinonia. Apostle, does it matter? Of course it does. Of course it does. Of course it does. When I start praying, please don't come out again. If you are still coming, I want you to rush and come. Male or female, I don't care. Whether you are a male or female, it doesn't matter. I, I, I perceive that there are even ladies, male or female. Jesus is setting us free. So there's nothing to be embarrassed about it. Please come and stand quickly. Male or female, Koinonia, celebrate them. still coming. Let's give them one more minute. Since God is already talking to them now, let's just take advantage of the anointing here. Apostle, I don't take it all the time. Still join them. You take it. The most important thing is that you take it. Even if it's not all the time, you take it. Join them and let God help you. Look at me, brothers and sisters. I'm your friend. I love you with all my heart. Like I said, you may look at these boys. Please, let me give a disclaimer. Hold on, Mike. Be careful when you look at people's children and just point and think they are bad. These people need help. I interact with these people all the time and they will tell you they don't like it. It's a spirit. Some of them, nobody took, got them into all of these things just by themselves. Some of them had dreams. Some of them had strange encounters. But my Bible says, God bless you. Don't be ashamed. Come and join. Please give them room. Honestly, let's, let's let this happen. Let's let this happen. Let's let this happen. If you are joining, come. The Bible says, for this purpose, for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy. That this, this, you see, this smoking and drinking thing is a terrible thing. You 
use carries cough syrup snuff it till you are almost dying pass out and come back again and still do it and then others sell that that leaf that they tie you collect it smoke it and all of that look at me I want to pray for you and I want to pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus your coming out here does not make me better than you in any way are we together now we are only we are only benefactors of the grace and the mercy of God I'm agreeing with you most people complain most people gossip about you I'm not gossiping about you I want to help you Koinonia as a family loves you now listen let me challenge all of you please after this prayer huh, all of you are automatically members of prayer department for the next one month you are welcome to prayer department for the next one month praise God so this is how we do it here I won't deceive you that once I just pray for you you go back and meet those friends they will laugh at you and laugh at me and say forget about them and then before you know it you will go back into those things one of the laws of of influence is atmosphere you open yourself to an atmosphere to destroy you so after I pray for you um, ushers what will happen is you can get their names and their details we we'll forward it to the um, prayer department and then we'll keep following up with you from there you need to keep praying you need to keep building your spirit you need to be taught the word of God and by God's grace we're helping you some of you here will be doing what I'm doing some years to come you will hold this mic in the name of Jesus Christ some of you here the ladies you may be the wives of great men of God evangelists and apostles there is nobody there's no such thing as hopelessness to him that is joined to the living there is hope stretch your hands saints of God if you are a mother here, stretch both of your hands. If you are a father here, stretch both of your hands. And say, use them as a point of contact. Whether your children are small or, or not, use them as a point of contact. We pray for you. We are praying for you now. That the power that is responsible for this living will end. I make contact with you. Causing trouble for somebody is not the way it happens. God can help you and God can bless you. In the name of Jesus, I set you free. If I've not touched you, just let me know and I'll lay my hands on you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I lay my hands upon you. I command that spirit to leave you. I command that devil to leave you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command that devil to leave you. I cause you are standing in for your brother. Where is he? What a wonderful lady. In the name of Jesus, I use you as a point of contact. As it's happening to you, let it happen to you. In, hold on, don't go. Ah, okay, you are directing them. Okay. We decree and declare. Have I prayed for you, gentlemen? In the name of Jesus, all of you are my friends. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we break this addiction from your lives. Join me and say Amen. pray for any association that will not let you serve God. I command those associations from today. Let them be a dissociation between you and them. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Let's appreciate them very quickly. Now, we are going to begin to pray. Have I prayed for them? Have I prayed for you? This guy, you are going to be a man of God. This brother, this gentleman. Bring him. This young man is going to be a man of God. And mentorship, there is a call of God upon your life. Huh? That we we and whatever it is that is still in the call, we cause it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Self-time in the name of Jesus. I decree.
and declare that every challenge in my life must come under the authority of Jesus tonight. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Those who are sick in body, I want you to come up. Those who are sick in body, overflow one, two, three, inside. to bring the healing power of God to people and we are very happy we will continue to do it some of you are standing for your loved ones God has made this place a, a solution center and we honor him for it now please look up we are going to do two things very quickly um, overflow one you can go to your projector stand overflow two your projector stand overflow three and every other one four just join them somewhere there. Someone will come to pray for you now. Praise the Lord. While they are doing this, how many of us came with our prayer request? Hallelujah. Now, what I want you to do very quickly, those online, you can post it online and uh, we're going to connect with it by faith. If you have not written your prayer request or you've not written for your loved ones, do it quickly. The ushers are going to be waving the a basket. Please, let's do it orderly. Just wave your prayer request and they'll locate you. You'll drop it there and we'll bring it to the altar while we pray. Very quickly. Praise the Lord. Pastor Ejimi will be outside, overflow one. Pastor Ejimi and Pastor Femi, overflow one. He's going to be praying, Pastor Alpha. You'll go to overflow two. Um, together with Mike. Mike, you follow him, overflow two. Overflow three, Benga and Promise. Two of you will be at overflow two and uh, overflow three and any other overflow there. Praise the Lord. We'll do it that way. Father, together we release a corporate anointing for miracles, signs, and wonders. We decree and declare right now that as we begin to minister to God's people, do a quick walk. Let incurable situations go. Let cancers go. Let HIV go. In the name of Jesus Christ, anoint everyone, oh God, that you are going to be using to lay hands on these people and let there be dramatic testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, God bless you. Please, let's go very quickly. We have, let's try to see how we can cover this in 15, 20 minutes. Are we together now? God bless you. Lord, thank you for healings. Thank you for miracles. Worship team, you will help us. Bless us in Jesus' name. Please accept, listen. Please accept the people laying hands on you, ask you. You don't need to tell them what is wrong with you. Just stand by faith. Praise God. The prophetic is at work. If there is need to prophesy or talk to you, just receive by faith. It doesn't mean we have to touch the area. Just believe by faith. You go and check yourself or call your loved ones. faith. Hallelujah. This is not a ritual that we do. This is a revelation that God gave and an instruction that every miracle service we receive the requests of God's people. No matter how we try to reach everyone we are constrained by time and um, so we are presenting it to the Lord. These are the things that attempt to say Jesus did not die. These are the things that attempt to say the work of the cross was and is a lie. So we bring them before him and we say, Lord, these are the obstacles that stop the revelation of your victory from being established in our lives. And we trust this fire to descend upon them. Stretch your hands by faith. Stretch your hands by faith, believing, believing. 
I want you to pray and say the request I'm dropping here is the last one, the last time I will be dropping this request. Please pray. Do we still have more, please? Those online, this is the time you connect with us. Those outside, you can stretch your hand to your, your projectors. God is doing miracles now. God of wonders. Jabala. Let the angel of the Lord pray. Now arise, O Lord. in the name of Jesus. Those who have been assigned unto death by reason of this prayer, they are delivered from death. Those who have been assigned unto failure by reason of this prayer, they are declared a success. Lord, turn around age-long captivities. You declared unto us in this miracle service that you are bringing restoration. I prophesy that anointing upon this request. Restore, O oh God. Restore, O oh God. Restore, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let there be strange restorations right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I want to pray for you. This is the last segment. I want us to connect. Our time is gone. We'll do this very quickly. Please lift your hands as I pray for you. That which God gives us, it is our joy to always dispense it to the people. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I decree and declare right now, every dry book, every dry situation, every hopeless situation in your life, receive life right now in the name of Jesus. Receive life right now in the name of Jesus. Receive life right now in the name of Jesus. Everything called dead in your life, dead finances, dead relationships, dead career lives. 
in the name of Jesus, hear the word of restoration. I prophesy, let it come back to life now. I prophesy, come back to life now. Come back to life now. Come back to life now. Every issue that has been a lingering issue for a long time and has refused to leave your destiny in the mighty name of Jesus, let tonight be the last night you will see it. Let tonight be the last night you will see it. He said, these Egyptians that you see today, you will see them no more forever. I command that you see them no more forever. In the name of Jesus Christ that is supposed to have opened up to you and we don't know why it has refused to open till now in the name of Jesus at this June miracle service I swing those doors open for you I swing those doors open for you I swing those doors open for you for those who are asking God for direction for the next level beginning from tonight receive encounters that give you direction outside make sure you are connecting receive encounters that give you direction in the name of Jesus Christ I speak over your life every gift that is not yet speaking every grace that is you is still dormant within you whether spiritual gift or physical gifts, I decree and declare right now. Shabras kata pakata kata kata, shekete kete kete, ma prato so doko to pa shekete ne. I command an awakening right now. I command a resurrection right now. I command an awakening right now. I command an awakening right now. Hear me. Every creative ability locked up on anyone here that has not found expression, I decree and declare life to your gift, life to your ability. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. There are many people here you are not working in spiritual gifts. Paul said, I long to see you that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that he may be established. I stretch my hands to you out of the abundance of help and God's grace and mercy. Something is coming upon you now. I decree and declare all nine gifts of the spirit revealed in scripture alongside others that have not been recorded at the count of three. Oh God, according to the faith of your people, let there be a distribution right now. One, two, three. Take it right now. Right now, take it right now, take it right now, take it right now. Step into those gifts. I release it upon you. I open up your spirit. I open up your understanding to be fruitful towards these gifts in the name of Jesus. I declare upon you the mantle of favor that has made the difference in the life of ordinary people. Granting them access to platforms, access to people, access to resources. Right now, in the name of Jesus, receive that mantle right now. Take that anointing of supernatural favor. I impart it upon your life. I impart it upon your life. Hallelujah. I pray for you right now. Everything that represents dishonor in your life. The Bible says, where thou hast been deserted, so that no man passes through you, you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. I speak over your life. The kind of honor that lifts you and distinguishes you above your contemporaries. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Ministry here, come back to life now. Every dying business, help them, help them, please. Every dying business here, come back to life now. In the name of Jesus, every dying destiny here. Whatever has 
destroy your prayer life so that your the fervency of your prayer life has gone down in the name of Jesus I found those calls to come back alive I found those calls of your prayer life to come back alive in the name of Jesus I pray for the spirit of revelation like never before access to the mysteries of the kingdom access to the operation of the world receive it right now receive it right now receive it right now i impart upon you the gift of faith let it be yours now in the name of jesus i impart upon you the gift of faith capacity to do impossible things receive that grace in the name of jesus i decree and declare one by one beginning from tonight the same way Noah opened the door of the ark and the animals started coming by themselves. I command everything that should be in your life and has left you. The same anointing that drew the animals one by one to the ark. I command you to draw your blessings to your life now. I command you to draw your blessings to your life now. Listen. Did not go to look for the animals he just opened the door the same way you have opened the door of your destiny i command i'm saying it again i want you to believe me it doesn't take time it only takes the right word into your life i decree and declare again between now and the next month's miracle service let there be strange testimonies of restoration strange testimonies of restoration Whatever has not been working in your life right now, whether it's your academics, your marriage, whatever it is, I force it to work now. Anything called barrenness in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. finances whatever makes this thing hard for you I cost that spirit now in Jesus name I decree and declare illumination grace to know what to do and grace to succeed at whatever you do receive it in the name of Jesus for those who are students whether on campus the university or any other campus I declare most of you are on break now you are about to resume as you resume in the name of Jesus I put life to your academics I command missing scripts to be found I command wrongly calculated results to be corrected in the name of Jesus as you prepare to write your exams I prophesy like rain from four points upwards I prophesy like rain hear what I'm saying I prophesy like rain from four points upwards in the name of Jesus Christ anyone here trusting God for a job in the name of Jesus between now and the next 30 days may the God of heaven arise and give you a job that will bring tears to your eyes Finally, I pray for you in the name of Jesus that if you have never stood here to testify, listen to what I'm saying. If you have never stood here to testify in the name of Jesus, I stand in partnership with Jesus, the firstborn of the begotten, and I command that God will give you a testimony that will be too big for you to remain on your seat. A testimony that will be too great for you to remain on your seat. A testimony too big to remain on your seat. I decree and declare the spirit of death 
there is a strange manifestation of the spirit of death it always comes like a circle looms over territory and takes the life of people i declare let the seal of the blood the mystery of exemption be upon you and your family in the name of jesus let the seal of the blood the mystery of exemption be upon you and your family i cause accidents i cause any kind of tragedy from coming to any family in the name of jesus christ finally i pray for you i command in a way like never before the helpers of your destiny i speak over your life the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers even if they came before i call them again thank you for lifting is gone but I cannot let us go without giving an opportunity please everyone stand any of you please. let's honor this altar call quickly help, help those under the anointing there are people here standing and saying man of God I want to make it right with Jesus some of you gave your hearts to him but for some reason things began to go haywire and you're saying man of God I want to return back some of you are yet to make this decision please listen to me inside and outside wherever you are you are saying man of God if you will pray for me I'm ready to surrender my heart to Jesus I'm ready to start afresh or start anew wherever you are I want to count five please if you are coming I want you to run clear the way for them our time is up and we have to be very very fast there are so many other things to do wherever you are as we begin to clap for you I count five you should be here please run like there's fire on the mountain one those coming from outside please protocol help them clear the way for them so that they come quickly quickly two koinonia appreciate them as they come run to Jesus Christ overflow one two three four everywhere please quickly three Are you coming? Please double up, double up, rush, rush, run and come. We're out of time, but this is a decision that is eternal. Come and encounter Jesus. God bless you. Come and encounter the power of God. Come and have a fresh start with him. He that did not withhold his only son, but offered him freely, how much more with him shall he give us all things? Keep coming. Three. Four. Five. Praise God. If you're coming, join them quickly. Those of you here in the front, I salute you. I congratulate you. While the rest are making their way coming, please, wherever you are, run, come. Catch up quickly, quickly. Are you rushing, please? Help us so that we can be very fast. We need to attend to people after service. I'd like you to lift your right hand and say this convincingly. Say this passionately. Say this sincerely. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you that you died for me you gave your life for me it's a powerful prayer you are praying tonight I've heard your word and I believe in you I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare that Jesus is Lord over my life I believe that God raised him from the dead and I declare that eternal life is mine today right now I am a child of God my sins are forgiven I have the life of Christ in me in the name of Jesus keep your hands lifted I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus I declare your sins forgiven I set you free now by the power of the Holy Spirit and I decree and declare that you begin to enjoy the ministry of the Holy Spirit in your life I pray for you that you will know the Lord like never before 
I declare that the power of sin, the power of the flesh, the power of Satan is destroyed completely from your life in the name of Jesus. I declare that you have a new start from tonight and the Lord himself will continually be glorified in your life. You go forward ever and backward never in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you and thank you. A gentleman is waving his hands. I want all of you to just follow them. They'll have your details. I appreciate you on our behalf. God bless you. Appreciate them quickly. Hallelujah. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.